that you, Martin? Yeah, it is me. Hey, um, I'm not sure who's the committee members on this um, attendee list. Do you see anyone that we should be moving over as panelists? Before um, hang on, let me let me look. Okay, I'll make you co-host for the moment, Terry, until we can get these guys moved over. Just tell me who. Right, attendees. Um, well, does it... Uh, You know what? Uh, typically, it, it, they go in through Zoom. Usually, the um, and they'll be automatic panelists. Right but here, we're not doing that yet. So, well, Peter Liff is a subcommittee member. So I guess he'll be the uh, during the this one. He'll be an attendee, correct? He's not a member of the committee yet. Correct. Okay. Okay. But other than that, I'm not seeing any names that. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it, Terry. All right. Let me find about if Mike's on yet or if he's getting ready. Okay. We're here. Let me know. Good evening, Richard. Hi, Martin here. You're muted at the moment. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thank you. And yourself, good? good? Doing well, thanks. All right, excellent. All right, we're just waiting for the meeting to begin. So I uh, just wanted to say hi to you and everyone. Uh, just give us a few minutes until Michael Lynn, the uh, chair of this committee, uh, joins us. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Martin Bale is a community, a community member. All right, thanks, Terry. Hi, Bela. Could you give me your last three digits of your phone number? Oh, I see you here. Gotcha. And then Chris Ragsdale, he's LAPD. You got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for your patience.
Good evening, it's Martin. I see two hands up. Uh, Cheryl, I'm gonna allow you to talk. Hi, I just wanted to make sure I could be heard. I haven't done it this way before, so that was it. I hear you. Are you a member of the committee? Uh, no, I'm a, um, a resident of Castle Heights. Um, uh, I live in this area and I've lived here for over 20 years. Well, I see you know how to raise your hand, so I didn't need to remind you, but uh, is it star nine? Start. Well, I'm on my iPad, so it's I have a button. To zoom. Press okay. All right. For all those others, it's star nine. Uh, if you're dialing in and uh, via Zoom, just raise your hand within the Zoom. Uh, Officer Baker should also be let in. Okie dokie. Thank you, Terry. Officer Baker, what are you, uh, are you a, the attendee under a name as I can find you? Or your phone number last three digits? It had said Officer Baker. Oh, so, okay. You must uh, went off for a minute. We folks tonight, so there's a lot of people. So just give me one sec. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chris, do you know what happened to, to Chris? Uh, he is. He, he should be trying to get in right now. Yeah, he was, and then all of a sudden he was off again. That's what yeah. I'm asking. Guys, he's in. Senior Lead Officer Baker is in um, under that. Permit to panelists. Thank you. Oh, there he is. Martin, the one two four eight number five one eight. That should be Mike. All righty, thank you. What are the last three digits, Terry? Five one eight. Thank you. Hey, Michael, can you hear me? Michael, are you there? Okay. He's muted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, is it time? Okay, I'm gonna lower everyone's hands to make sure the chair isn't dialing in um, and we need to be moved over to panelists. So um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, we'll do that so we can get the meeting started. Thank you. Michael, have you dialed in? I see him there. He's just muted. Okay. He's the 518 number.
Hey, Michael, can you hear me? Hi, Michael. Are you there? I see him as an attendee again. Yeah, I can't move him over and, and right now. I'm not sure why. So, Michael, can you uh, can you hear us? You're muted, so. Hello, LL, you're unmuted. Hi. Your hands up. Yay, finally unmuted. Okay, are you LL? <laughs> oh, God, I am so, I'm like yelling, I'm screaming. I'm here, yeah, I'm you're here. You're panelist in a sec, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't unmuting for some reason. No worries. Okay. I'll make you the host. Here, we're here. So is everybody, are we ready to start the meeting or? Yeah, whenever you're ready, I'm going to make you the host. I won't be able to uh, attend this evening, but uh, let me know when you're ready to end the meeting and I will do so. Okay. Well, you what I'm going to do is um, we'll start the meeting and then uh, at some point I'll have you turn over co-hosting duties or hosting duties to some, I actually making me host is useless because I'm on the phone. I can't see anything. Oh, okay. Well, Terrence is so hold, <laughs> Right. So hold the host and then um, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. Anyways, um, welcome everybody to the South Robertson Neighborhood Council Public Safety Committee meeting. Uh, today's date is September 8th, 2020, and our official start time is 9.54 p.m. Eastern time, which is where I'm calling from, 6 54 where you guys are. Um, I'm going to be going into surgery tomorrow morning. So <laughs> uh, this is going to be a very short stint for me here. Um, anyways, we'll just jump right to it. We start off each public safety meeting uh, by going around the room, and in this case, the virtual room, and introducing ourselves. Actually, before I do that, I should say that uh, this meeting is operated under the laws of the state of California, including the Brown Act, which means that we can only discuss things that are on the agenda with one exception, and that's going to be general public comment, which will be right after the introductions. And then if you have an item that is not on the agenda that you wish to bring up, maybe something for a future meeting or just a comment that doesn't need any discussion, uh, you can do so at the time. I mean, assuming it's safety related. And uh, with that, we'll go to introductions. And I'm Mike Lynn. I chair the Public Safety Committee and have been on the Soro board, you know, uh, since 2010. And uh, again, you know, keep the introductions as brief as possible because we've got a stacked agenda. And okay, so um, Martin Michael, or Terry, either one of you. I'm going to jump in for one second, Gary, because Barion's trying to get in. So if someone, Martin could let Gary in, he's a board member. Yep, we're doing that right now. And Michael, by the way, I'm not sure um, you can't see who um, is the attendees versus the panelists. Uh, maybe I can't uh, see you... anything. Okay, okay. Well, thank you at least for. Uh, um... <laughs> I know tomorrow's a big day for you, so thank you for dialing in at least. Um, it's much appreciated. Terry, can you um, uh, make sure that there's no one in the attendees column that should be a panelist besides Gary now coming in? That's the only one I see. Is that correct, Bela? Bela, you're muted. Hi, um, 
working. I'm looking at the list. I don't see anybody else. Do you, Bela? I don't. Okay. Gary's in. I'm looking. Um, I'm looking for Shana. She usually joins the meeting, and she usually has a hard time getting in. Okay. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we yeah, go through the. Let's go through the panelists first, and then we'll go down the attendees and hope. And if somebody's a panelist who should be, we can move them over at that time. Okay, so let's start with, uh, um, you know, I'll let uh, whoever has, uh, Martin, can you just read off names and make sure we don't miss anybody? Yeah, of course. So your panelists are this evening, uh, yourself, uh, Leila. Terrence, Becky, uh, Officer Ragsdale, Richard Bloom, and Senior. No, I mean, just, just uh, call on people is what I mean. Okay. Call on people to introduce themselves. Okay. Well, we'll start with you. Introduce yourself. <laughs> I just did. Okay, then. Uh, Bala, please introduce yourself. You're muted, though. Hi, you? I'm Bela Rahm. I'm a member of this committee. Thank you. Okay, Terry, you're muted. Terrence Gomes, I'm on the board. Okay, Becky. Hi, I'm Becky, and I'm not on the board, but I'm just joining the meeting for the first time. Welcome. Uh, Officer Ragsdale, you're muted, by the way. Uh, Chris Ragsdale, Senior Lead Officer, covering basic car area 80 out on 59, which is... Uh, Robertson Pico East, uh, Crestview, and uh, La Cienega Heights. Thank you. Hey, uh, Richard Bloom, welcome. Rich Bloom, Sora Board, Zone 2 representative. Okay. Officer uh, Baker, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Christer, Officer Christopher Baker, a senior lead for Basic Car 8A95, Century City to Venice and La Cienega. Back over to you, Mike. Okay, so that's all the panelists. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. I'm a panelist, or I should be. It's Lori Levine. Lori? I, yep, I'm a member of the uh, safety committee. Okay, can you move Lori over to panelists, please? She actually yes. is a panelist. She came in correctly as a panelist, so she's already there. Thanks, Lori. Oh, okay. And uh, who's next? I believe that's all the folks Are, in your committee as um, attendees. Okay, so now, so okay. now just uh, call off the phone number or people on the attendees and have them introduce themselves as well. Okay, last number ending in 518. You are live. No, that's me. Okay, there we go. You're also LL. I get it now. Okay, excellent. All right. Uh, uh, number ending 845. You're live. You're muted, though. Again, uh, last three numbers in 845. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Jody. I am just, uh, I'm a member of the public uh, calling in for comments. Well, welcome. All right. We have uh, uh, Ash Hutch. Your talking's um, muted, but you're ready to be introduced. You're muted, though. Please unmute. That's A S H H U T C H. You're uh, muted. Okay, we'll come back to you. Uh, Brooke W, talking's permitted. Hi, you're muted, though. Hi, my name is Brooke Wetzel. I'm a uh, neighbor. I live in Castle Heights. First time at the meeting, just here calling in. Welcome, Welcome Brooke. Okay, last three numbers in 845. Or Ash Hutch, you're uh, now uh, ready to talk. Hi. But you're muted. <laughs> Unmute, please. That's A-S-H-H-U-T-C-H. Okay, we'll come back to you. Uh, hi, Kendall. Uh, you are, I believe, unmuted. Hi, 
Hello. Okay, Sandy, can you hear me? Excuse me, Martin. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, Derek has fine. variant the board member. He can't yeah. get on. Okay, right. I, I'm trying to move him over. It just takes a minute, I believe. So we're waiting for that. Okay, meanwhile, keep on going to the next person. Okay. So here we got a lot of people in the waiting room. We do. Do you want to introduce all the attendees or you just want to go on with your uh, meeting, Mike? It's, um, there's a lot of us. There's just 63 folks now. Oh boy, 63? Are you serious? 63, and I want well, to make sure that all board members can go over. So um, if you would like. All right, well, let's do this then. Um, when we do comments, you can you know, obviously state your name at that point. Um, I didn't realize there was that many people there. I unfortunately, I can't see that. So, okay, we'll we'll move forward then. Okay, the first item of business will be general public comment. So, if again, this is only for items that are not on the agenda, and keep in mind that they cannot be discussed. Um, they can only be comments, and because we have sixty three people, if you can please keep it as brief as possible. And if you're going to just echo something that somebody else said, just say that and, um, you know, just as brief as possible and take it away, Martin. Okay. Well, uh, Michael, uh, just to let you, your, your folks know, if you weren't signed up as an uh, email attendee of the public safety meeting, that may be why you're having a problem uh, being transferred over as a panelist. Board members, keep that in mind. So please uh, go in via the Zoom link if that's helpful and we'll get you in as soon as we can. Thank you. I did have general public comment as the next thing on the agenda, didn't I? Or did I have the election? General public comment. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so take away general public comment. So just, uh, you know, you need to raise your hand. So if you're on a phone, you need to hit star nine to raise your hand. And then Martin will call on you. Okay. We're getting there. Give me one second. Okay. Looks like our first speaker will be uh, uh, ACAB. You're unmuted. Okay. We can come back. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, I'm calling to give in general public comment. Go ahead, please. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm calling to uh, ask what uh, the role of members of this neighborhood council or the neighborhood council in any formal capacity was in the boulders that have displaced an unhoused resident under the 10 freeway in Cataraugus. Um, by my estimation, that's a legal placement of those boulders. Uh, I don't know what gives y'all the authority to displace a member of our community. Um, but it seems like you went ahead and did it. I know that members of the community saw Soro neighborhood council people talking about doing landscaping there. There have been pictures circulating of uh, heavy equipment uh, indicating that maybe the neighborhood council or uh, the city itself might, uh, might be privy to what's going on. So. A uh, full investigation needs to be done. Anyone who had anything to do with it should be removed from their position. Um, and those boulders need to be removed immediately so our neighbor can get back to uh, one of the few places of shade and shelter in our city that is incredibly hostile to its unhoused residents. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, and just as a technical note for uh, that caller and every other caller, please note that we can't answer the question. We can't engage in discussion. That's part of the uh, rules that we're abiding by in the Brown Act. So just note that for technical, technical purpose, legal purpose, actually. Okay, continue. Okay, Cheryl, you're next. Cheryl Griffin. 
Hi, um, I'm a resident of Castle Heights. I've been a resident here since uh, 1993. And um, I, want to support the the first uh person who talked about about the uh, boulders i'm i'm a resident here i've owned a house here and um, i'm flabbergasted that that happened that those those boulders are there and i just want to um say that as a resident here we're not all like the people who put those boulders up there and that we realize that there are people in this world who need somewhere to live and be safe and i just I, i'm just upset as a resident of Castle Heights. Okay, thank you. Next. Next is Sandy. Hi, Sandy, you're live. Hi, Sandy, can you hear me? Okay, uh, we'll come back to you. Uh, looks like Martin Lieberman. Hi, can you hear me? Remember, it's star six to unmute. And star nine to raise your hand when she's done. So yes, thank you, Mike. Sandy Nebler's up. Yeah, yeah Hi, Sandy. Okay, Welcome. I'll start again then. My name is Sandy Nevler. I've been a resident of La Cienega Heights since 1954. And uh, I have attended this meeting mostly last year. Um, I did email Michael about something, a couple items I would like to see on the agenda uh, next, next month. One has to do with speeding, the, the dangerous drivers, especially on Cadillac, but all over the neighborhood, there have been many very bad accidents in front of my house, half a block away, a block away, in all directions. Something needs to be done. I thought Liz Carlin was going to attend because she had promised me that something would be done. And the other issue is the illegal dumping that Liz Carlin had promised something would be done. This is a couple of years ago. And I think we need to send out information so that people are aware of what's legal and what's not in regard to disposing of items, large and small. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Okay, next we have, looks like JR. Hi, you're live. Hi, JR. Hi, can you hear me? We can, welcome. Hi, I'm, I've never called into this meeting before, but I live in LA and I, I uh, work near the area where this neighborhood is. And um, I'm really disgusted to see there were boulders placed um, under that bridge where unhoused people live. Um, I saw Christopher Ragsdale smiling as someone brought that up as if that's funny. Um, someone displaced you out of your house. Uh, would you like that? That's, that's just disgusting. Um, you, you need to support unhoused people, not just try to get them out of your neighborhood. Um, and I, I demand a full explanation for why these boulders were placed there and the neighborhood council needs to take action to have them removed um, and respond accordingly. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I called to say. Okay, thank you. Okay, next we have Brooke W. You're, you're live. Hi, Brooke. Oh, hi, I didn't have my hand up. Uh, am I required to make comments? <laughs> well, your hand was up, but it's okay. Next oh, time. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, well, I mean, I do agree with the, the last few callers I actually called in about. The boulders on Cataragus. I live, uh, again, like I said, near Hamilton High in the neighborhood. Um, as far as illegal encampments go, which are actually technically legal, um, currently there are far worse. Uh, and I just find it disgusting that members of my community or even outside of my community came in and did something that the community did not ask for. So that's my comment. Okay, thank you, Brooke. Next, we have uh, Doug Fitzsimmons. Uh, you're you're uh, live. 
Hi, uh, thank you for Evening. taking the time. Um, my name is Doug Fitzsimmons. I'm past president of Soro NC. I am furious and uh, that uh, if any of these allegations that board members use their uh, position on the board to have legitimacy to this uh, placement of boulders uh, to displace unhoused people within our community. Um, this board uh, has worked long and very hard uh, to foster a sense of understanding and support for the unhoused, uh, worked very hard um, to find homes within our community for them. Um, I know a number of the people who, uh, who donated to this project. I do know that it's not a function of the NC, but uh, all I can say is this is not the way to solve the problem. This is, uh, this is an act of cruelty uh, that is unwarranted. And uh, I hope that the NC, that this committee will refer the matter to the general board uh, for a formal measure of condemnation of the action and work with the city and Caltrans to have these illegal boulders removed as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Okay, well, looks like Olga's next. Hi, Olga, you're live. Hi there, my name is Olga. I'm sure some of you know me because I've made comment at transportation and land use and the general board meetings. As a resident of this neighborhood who's lived here for years and as somebody who's rented and owned and truly seen both sides of what it's like to have different levels of wealth in this neighborhood, as somebody who's also been homeless and lived out of a car in this neighborhood, I am so appalled to hear about these boulders that members of this community illegally left on the sidewalk underneath the I-10. It's not only is it a safety issue because people can't access that sidewalk and the sidewalk is destroyed now, this is also disgusting because it's public safety applies to everybody in the public. It doesn't matter how much money you have. As a committee, you are obligated to protect people no matter their level of wealth. And Christopher Ragsdale, please stop smirking every time somebody mentions this. That man was a member of our community. We all know him and we've all spoken to him. And these people came into his house and attacked it. And you're all laughing about it? It's absolutely despicable. I can't believe that none of you are taking this seriously, especially considering the allegations that members of this very committee participated in that attack. Not only is that a violation of the Brown Act, completely unethical. Mm. I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Next. Next is Kathleen Robbins. Hi, my name is Kathleen. I am also calling about the boulders in the Cataraugus tunnel. Um, I find this highly upsetting, highly distressing. Um, it's uh, I saw that the fundraiser for this endeavor was called a safety and beautification project. I failed to understand how filling the tunnel with boulders in any way, shape, or form makes it safer or beautifies it. This was clearly an endeavor to just displace unhoused people uh, in the middle of a heat wave, in the middle of a global pandemic, in which the CDC has recommended unhoused people uh, remain where they are in an effort to social distance. So not, this was the exact opposite of a safety project. This, this is putting people at risk. I'm highly opposed to this and the people responsible for this need to uh, be held accountable. Thank you. Okay, next for hey, uh, thank you. public comment. So, thanks Mike. Uh, last three numbers in 617, you're live. Hello, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Hi, wonderful. So my name is Lorenzo DiColita. I'm a lifelong resident of the South Robertson area and there was a heat wave. And when our neighbors sought shelter, there were boulders obstructing them from seeking safety in the shade of a freeway underpass. So the person who placed these boulders, likely a member of this neighborhood council, what the actual fuck were you thinking? In the middle of a pandemic and heat wave, 
where record numbers of Angelinos are forced onto the streets. You set up boulders. For what? Imagine living on the street yourself. Why not join my friends and I and advocate for services? Not sweeps, not boulders, no nothing. The council must condemn this illegal dumping and all members involved in any of the so-called landscaping, doxing, and anti-homeless activity should resign or be forced out. You've made a terrible mistake. Oh, and Officer Ragsdale, I'm very, very, very petty. So your smiles may seem funny now, um, but I do have really good access to California public records. I yield my time. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next. Thank you. I want to uh, remind everyone not to um, um, have any, uh, uh, we are a, a good group here. We don't um, go after each other and attacks and what have you. So just please keep uh, our, uh, our uh, you know, comments in a, a positive fashion. Thank you. We're going to look at our next one, which is the last three numbers are 818, your phone number. You are ready to talk. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, my name is Julia. I'm a member of the community. Like so many others I have been calling in, I'm calling in about the boulders uh, that are under the underpass and uh, Cataragas and the I-10 bridge. Um, just echoing everything that everybody's been saying. I think that we deserve an explanation for this. If you're unable to do so during this committee meeting, um, we demand an explanation um, in another form. Uh, there are no other words to describe this than hateful and inhumane. We are experiencing a heat wave and terrible air quality with the fires right now. There's ash all over my car. And these individuals already being exposed to the, to the elements are... Uh, seek underpasses as shelter as heat reprieves in the city where we only have about five cooling centers occasionally available. On top of that, I've seen the number about $3,600 were spent on these ugly boulders, and that money could have been spent on materials, on resources, on supplies to help keep these people alive. Three a day are dying in LA. Three homeless individuals are dying each day in LA, and we should be helping save lives. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. We yeah. um so we have uh, uh twenty more hands up and seventy two attendees. So I'm going to go to Aaron T. Oh, are you serious? Aaron T. You're next, and you uh. Oh God. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Welcome. Hi, uh, my name's Aaron. I'm calling to echo the complaints about the boulders. I'll say something a little bit different. Um, this is a completely unsanctioned vigilanteism. So I'm talking to the LAPD officers here. This is your opportunity to solve an actual crime. Prove you're here to pro provide public safety for everyone. It looks like some group of people organized through GoFundMe, illegally evicted people, stole their stuff to throw away, illegally blocked the street, put up false snow parking signs, and illegally dumped rocks on the sidewalks using heavy equipment. The evidence of who did this is all over the internet. If you want to do something, find them and charge them. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, we have uh, Jessica G. You're a, you're lit. Uh, yes. You are referring to me, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I see here. It was, it was, it was uh, Jesse. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Cool. My, my apologies. You no welcome. worries. No worries. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for you're giving live. me some time to speak. You got it. Um, so, like other callers here, I'm calling in about the boulders and. Frankly, if I wanted ugly art in my neighborhood, I would have hired some fucking toddlers. The fact that grown ass fucking men spent um, excuse me, to excuse bring me. One, thing, uh -uh. one thing, one uh -uh. thing. Hey, wait, wait, hey, hang on. No, no, Public no, comment no, no. is fine, but swearing is not. Uh, don't speak okay, over we me. Need to you can't respond. Language. No, 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 no. no. Don't right, speak I'm over sorry. me. He can this is my time to comment. Wants. Welcome to the yeah, First like Amendment. <laughs> Let Thank the you. public All right. speak. Thank you. This is my time to talk, and I will talk without being silenced by you. Thank you. Um, yeah. One are, you, of the, are you ready to Are you ready to let me speak again or no? One of the people who's in the neighborhood council program. Your mic's live. Yeah, yeah but you have feedback. You also have feedback. And Somebody has feedback that we need to silence so that you can we can hear the caller. It's Aaron. Okay, um, no, I, I just want to, it sounded like there was another open line or something that was coming forward that was blocking what you were saying. So continue. So, and, so uh, here's, you can use, here's, no, here's the thing. Wait, so somebody just chastised me for swearing. So you think swearing is unacceptable, but placing boulders under a freeway overpass, one of the few places of shade and safety for our unhoused residents to live, 
is somehow more acceptable than me swearing on a public comment phone call, that is patently absurd. The fact is our unhoused residents in this city experience so much trauma every goddamn day at the hands of their housed neighbors because we can't stand the sight of them in our neighborhoods. Ooh, they make us feel unsafe. Well, you know what? Who's unsafe? They're unsafe. They're living outside and they're dying every single day. And the fact is neighborhood councils are a great place to actually provide solutions to these problems. Neighborhood councils have funding and they have influence. Those two things should be used to help people in our communities, not bar them from living in our neighborhoods like some sort of filth that we can just toss away. The fact is the people who did this, I don't, I'm just so disgusted. I don't even have words for them. And here's a final fuck you, I'm done. Okay. Thank you very much. Next caller, uh, Mallory Swartz, you're live. Hi, Mallory, can you hear me? Yes, hi, hey, yeah, thanks for calling on me. It bumped off my race one a moment ago. Uh, yeah, I just want to echo the same sentiments that other callers have made, specific, specifically Aaron. I don't know where the two officers who were on this call earlier went off to, um, but this is a crime, what was done with the boulders under the overpass and should be addressed as such. Um, those individuals who placed those boulders and who raised money to do so, um, unhoused neighbors who were living under the overpass and, and really, um, made their lives uh, extremely difficult in this time as we all know everyone's going through a really difficult time and it, it, it's it's just unconscionable um, and beyond unconscionable is illegal and should be handled as such. So I don't know where those officers went to, um, but as council members yourselves and as people responsible for your neighborhood, I would expect all of you to take this seriously, take these calls seriously um, and recognize your position of pr privilege and power to do something about it. Uh, please don't let this fall on deaf ears. Uh, please don't wait for this just to be over. And please don't look for these calls to stop because they won't if no action is taken. People will continue to come back and will continue to speak up. And we'll continue to do this until you take your responsibility um, with, you know, the uh, the quality of character we expect of our council members. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Matt Hing. You're live. Thank you. Um, I'm a resident in Rainier Village as well as a health provider. I've lived in this neighborhood for almost three years and continue to be really touched by the sense of community that I receive from my neighbors here. But like many of the other callers tonight, it's become urgently clear from the placement of these boulders on cataract hills that not everyone receives a level of welcome, especially our unhoused neighbors. And I think it's, it's almost impossible to overstate the financial hardship that COVID-19 is catalyzing for people, not just in our neighborhood in LA as a whole, and we see this suffering reflected in the increased amount of folks who are residing under underpasses and streets. And I would hope that if I were in that situation, my neighbors would extend empathy and help me move forward, not place a boulder in my path. This is antith antithetical to who we are as a community in Los Angeles. And in contrary to what I hope our neighborhood cares about. I can't believe I have to say this out loud, but wouldn't it make a million times more sense to invest money into people and not rocks during this time? Wouldn't it? <laughs> Just invest in services, invest in accompaniment to our neighbors, and I second everyone else's concerns about demanding an immediate investigation and a public statement condemning this heinous and cowardly action toward our neighbors and the immediate removal of the boulders. The call will not stop until the boulders stop. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, next, Naomi, you're uh, live to talk. Hi, yeah, I just want to know whose dumb idea it was to raise money to do something so ridiculous you should be embarrassed and uh echo the sentiments of all, all the other callers including ftp thank you very much okay thank you yes lisa uh you're uh live hi lisa hi good, good evening um i don't know if you guys had heard but there are all these boulders placed on cataragas underneath the tent um, I'm pretty sure that they were put there illegally to displace unhoused people, which is infuriating because unhoused people are just as much stakeholders in the community as are housed people. Now, I understand that I'm sure it wasn't a faction of the neighborhood council to officially condone this or act on it and did it, but yet I do hold the committee 
uh, and the neighborhood council culpable for allowing the kind of situation to be present for something like that to happen. And especially for the police officers that are part of this committee that were on visible, who have hidden their faces smartly because by their smirking and they're laughing at people, it is a buy-in to allow this kind of behavior to happen. Uh, it's completely unacceptable. And when you displace unhoused stakeholders, it doesn't solve the problem. In fact, it makes it worse. You, at least there, they had a nice safe place to be from shade, sun, heat, rain, whatever. But now they're gonna be really in your neighborhoods. You think that they were there under the freeway was too close for people. Now displacing them, it just is a giant human whack-a-mole game please do everything you can to discourage this kind of behavior happening amongst your house stakeholders towards the unhoused stakeholders. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Okay, next we have uh, Peter and your mic is live. Hi, Peter. Here we can go. You, can you hear me now? Sure can. Okay. Good. My name is Peter Eilif. I'm one of the people who put the boulders in the tunnel. Um, we're in Rainier Village, and uh, the tunnel is a choke point for our, our neighborhood to uh, access uh, Helms and uh, Metro and Culver, and vice versa for Helms to access Hamilton High and Shenandoah Elementary and the park. We've had a number of safety issues. We've had, we've had attacks. We had a recent attack that Chris Bacon can tell you about where a, a mentally ill man charged and um, with a blunt object, a man pushing a baby stroller had, a, had his two young kids with them. They had to run for their lives. So, uh, so I'll, just have to, I'll just close with saying, no homeless were displaced. The man who made the attack on the resident in July, he was, moved away by the LAPD. The man who had the stolen bicycle shop, he was, I believe, also moved away by LAPD. The other guy in the west side, uh, Motai was his name, he was offered um, an apartment, not a, um, not a uh, shelter, but an apartment, and he refused. He was offered many times, me personally, he was offered help. And then he vanished. He vanished on a, um, on a Saturday. He was still gone on a Sunday. And on Monday, he had 30 feet of trash there. So uh, after three days of him not being there, the community and over about 30 people showed up to clean 30 feet of trash. It was, um, it was one of the saddest things I ever saw. There were no personal possessions. It was a fire pit. It was a bag of drugs, including meth pipes and, um, and lighters and a full vial of oxy. And it was... Um, all these uh, like uh, stolen letters and Amazon packages with like inkjet cartridges and stuff. And it, it was just, it was really sad. It was just trash, just trash. It was, and there was five bottles of urine that were really old. And, and so God bless Mote. Um, I, I hope he's okay. Now we did this for the safety of our neighborhood. I feel the hate you're all giving on us. I'd love to have a dialogue. I'd love to find solutions to the problem of house neighbors. But we cannot have the mothers and children of Rainier Village fear for their lives to go through that choke point. And that's the way we feel about it. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Peter. Okay, it looks like, Michael, we're still in general public comment and we have uh, 12 hands raised. And then the next one will, um, yeah. Okay, actually, uh, if we still, well, no, I can make it through 12, go ahead. Okay, yeah, general public comment. We, we should hear everyone. Uh, okay, I believe Noreen, you are uh, live now to talk. Hi, Noreen, can you hear me? Hi, um, hold on, I'm gonna close this. Hi. Yeah, I want to second the the sentiment that everybody's been saying on this call and also respond back to Peter's comments specifically. Um, I understand that there's certain fears and stresses that created the reason why you wanted to, that you thought that it was ethical to be doing this, but to create a beautification project, to think that this was 
The actions of one person that you're referring to from months ago is reflective of every person who's unhoused and that you should create future barriers for what every unhoused person is going through is not an acceptable reason to have created the barriers that you did. The, there, to put that in the, in the lives of so many people because you have fear and your fear is not whether or not it's rational. And I don't believe it's rational to have just created those kinds of barriers for, for reasons that for, is logical to you, but have created so many pains in other people's lives. And I wanna express also just look Looking at this agenda, which covers having homeless safety as one of the pieces on this, it talks about promoting for disadvantaged communities, communities of color. That's the very things that you are going against when you're doing this, and you cannot be fixing the solutions that you're going to be talking about later in this meeting if you do not get to this first, because this is an immediate concern, and this is the very thing that you say that you're speaking about later on. I'm also a member of a neighborhood council and working on homelessness, and it's embarrassing to know the reputation that neighborhood councils have throughout the city because of actions like this and the ineptitude of making sure that things actually happen to serve the most, the people that you, you were elected to serve. So I would ask just from this conversation, recognize that you had 60 plus people on this call for a reason, recognize what they're saying, really make sure that there's an opportunity in the future to create a dialogue with the people who thought that this was okay to do. I would love for that to happen, there be, be more communication because the very people who are stopping this, they're, 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 this cannot be a polarized issue. Like we need to be on the same page, for, especially right now at a time like this. So one is create opportunities for creating dialogue. And secondly, make sure that those boulders get the fuck out of here. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Hey, looks like uh, Anna, you're next. You're live to talk. Hi. Hi. Um, hi just moved to this neighborhood a couple of weeks ago and I have been met with nothing but kindness by my neighbors. Um, but I have to address the things that were said about the reasons for yeah. adding the boulders. You say that no homeless were displaced, but when you call the LAPD, what do you think happens? Um, we know that homeless individuals with mental health issues are often killed by the cops. Um, just this summer, because the cops were called while he was having um, a psychiatric episode, he was deemed a threat and he was shot and killed. Um, even if the in, the interaction doesn't end with murder, but instead ends with someone being taken away. Um, homeless people are incredibly vulnerable. They will then face fines by the police. They will be relocated to areas that they don't know where they're even more vulnerable than they already are. Instead of investing in racks, you need to invest in resources to help these individuals. Um, you say that you were concerned about the trash that they were hoarding, but you treated these people like trash. You treated them as something to be disposed of, something to be removed so that you wouldn't have to deal with it. Well, you have to deal with it. You are a city council member. You need to know about the resources that are available and the way that you should help these people who are not trash, but residents of this neighborhood. You should have called the Homeless Outreach Mobile Engagement number. Um, their number for reference is 213-480-3482. <coughs> and if you're truly concerned about mental health issues, you should call the Psychiatric Mobile Response Team. All of these outlets are housed under the County Department of Mental Health and as city officials, you should know about these resources and be actively promoting them to people in our neighborhood. Everyone should know that these numbers exist and that those are the outlets that we should be using to treat people as humans and to make sure that they're getting the care they need, not to call the cops to have them taken away so that you don't have to deal with it. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next we person. We have Rocky, you're uh, um, live to talk. Hello there, can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. Um, yeah, I want to echo the sentiments of everyone else uh, regarding the Boulder issue and also the fact that uh, these unhoused folks who really need our help and are lacking in resources were pretty much treated as a nuisance for folks who are living in, you know, God knows what kind of beautiful building is taking up space there itself. Uh, also, uh, these, bo these boulders are um, like mobility hazards. My girlfriend has a wheelchair. So many people using canes and any other thing that helps them move. Uh, will be blocked from traveling uh, and uh, again obviously in this heat and in current circumstances uh, that's just kind of a despicable thoughtless thing people were not obviously thinking about the grander uh, consequences of this action other than oh it'll get rid of the people who are bothering our nice friendly rich people these are your neighbors as well these are also human beings I don't care if they're not your neighbors they are another human being you should care about and do your best to just not get in their way or hurt them like I don't know what I don't I don't know what to tell you. If you're, if you're being this thoughtless and inhumane, then uh, may you be judged for it properly. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm done. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you all for general public comment. Just Mike, a, a heads up, you have 13 more folks with their hands up. For general okay, <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, if we could then, um, I do have to, I mean, it seems like it's growing. Um, I do I have to get off this call public. very soon. So what I would like to do is suspend uh, general public comment for the moment, just for the moment. We can't and move do up that. The, wait, can't. hang on, hang on, just chill, just chill, just I can... Um, move to temporarily suspend for a moment and do the election of the vice chair so that that way I can leave the meeting and turn over to a vice chair. We can't do so that. Just, yes, you can. Who can said you, I can't do that? Can you please cite the basis for how you can suspend public comment? Um, I'm suspending it for a moment to, unless there's objection from the committee members to just for the moment, just to a point of the, or just to uh, have the general election for the vice chair, at which point I can turn the meeting over to the vice chair because I have surgery in the morning and I do have to go. It's so in order 13 to have public meeting, comments. You have no basis for suspending it. Let's let them get done. Okay. I'm not, I'm not saying they can't talk. I'm just holding it for a moment until we can just do a quick election. It's a procedural matter and I can definitely do it. If it's a procedural matter, so, you should be able to cite the basis for doing it. Just uh, it's under Robert's rule. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a motion to, su to suspend for the moment general public comment and move up the next agenda item to just quick to just do that if there's no objection from the committee. So that is what uh, what we have on the table at the moment. If there no is objection from the committee, we take it to a that. vote. I'll second that. Well, you don't have to. Okay, but it's only if there's objection. If there's no objection, there's no we objection. don't have to. Not from the committee. Will we come back to public comment? Yes. Yes, yes. We will come back to couple of public comment. 13 people that are holding, don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Okay, You'll, we'll be right back with you in just a second. Okay, so I'm just moving I, the next item up for the election of the vice president or vice chair, I should say, um, so that uh, once that's done, we can continue the meeting and then I can go. Okay, so, um, okay, so I'm gonna open the floor to nominations or uh, uh, for uh, vice chair. Okay, do I have any, that's something different. Okay, do I have any nominations or? Awareness, and then he can tell us what to do with it later. Second. Wait, I hear cross talk or something in the background that needs to be muted. I nominate Bela. Okay, real quickly, Michael, you're unable to see your panelists for this. Can I read them to you? Okay. Anyone? Oh, I can barely hear any. I can't. I got too much cross talk going. Okay, I have your uh, panelist list, which I believe are committee members. I'm going to read their names just so you have those. Um, yeah, um, right. Yeah, okay. There's Becky. We'll um, see. Becky is not a committee member. All right. That's correct. I'm actually not a committee member. I don't know. I, 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 I will put that on the chat. Okay. Let's see um, who's on your committee, right? Because you're yeah, filing yeah, on the phone, right? I mean, well, I, can, I pretty much know who my committee is. Um, basically, basically, I um, would like to nominate okay, Terry second. Gomes. Oh, I'll yeah. second that. Right. Okay, but is there anyone else who wants to anyone be opposed? so we can vote on that? Anyone who, who wants right. besides? First of all, Terry, you know, do you, which I'm sure Helen will speak on here. You know, I mean, we mute all the rest. Hang on, please. Yeah, you, somebody's got it. Thank you, Martin. Uh, you muted Mike. <laughs> Michael, can you hear me? Yeah, thanks, Martin. You muted me. <laughs> okay. okay. Anyway, so Terry, do you accept that nomination? That's fine. Okay. Do I have any other nominations? Or any self proclamations? I'd like to nominate Richard Bloom. 
Richard Bloom, do you accept that nomination? Well, thank you for the uh, honor, but I am going to respectfully decline. I attend all these meetings. It's very important to me, uh, but I will uh, decline the nomination, but I appreciate it. Thank you, Richard. Uh, do we have any other nominations or self-proclamations? Okay, then we'll take it to a vote. Um, and this will have to be a voice vote, I guess, because I can't see you guys. So um, we're gonna be, be either an, a yes in favor of Terry or a no, not in favor of Terry. So um, I guess I'll start, yes. And then Martin, you can call on people. Okay, yes, I'm gonna go to the attendees. Please everyone put your hands down. And if you are a member of the committee, can you please raise your hand to vote? yes or no, or whatever your vote would be, okay? Last number in 845, you're live. No, that's me. Okay, all right. Anybody wait, else wait, have wait. that are <laughs> voting? No, wait, I'm sorry, 845 is not me. I'm sorry, 4518 is me. You go but, to the um, panelists, uh, Martin, you see everybody there. Except for Jessica, she's not on the committee. Okay, well, uh, the panelists list, if that's all the committee members that are not attendees, that's that's fine, we'll go over there. I just wanted to say, if there's anybody who's an attendee who is a committee member who hasn't been moved over, please raise your hand to vote. That's all that was. So 845, you have your hand up. Are you a committee member? Hi, sorry, I, um, I'm on the phone, so I thought I had to press star nine again okay. to put my hand down. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go back over to the panelists as I don't see anyone else. Okay, uh, Becky, are you a committee member? I am not. Okay, thank you. I'm Jessica, a member of the either? public. Yeah, we're, we're doing a vote right now. Michael, sorry to <laughs> interrupt. Yeah, just go ahead, please. Please go ahead with the committee member vote, okay. please. Balia. Yes, I vote yes. I had to open my mic and also I'm, I'm texting with Gary Kasbarian, who's a board member and he's not able to get in and he said yes to vote for Terrence Gomes. I could send you a screenshot if you like. Well, I uh, actually technically, unless he's there, we can't take it, but- uh, You get Gary, um, or whatever, thank you. I vote yes also. As this LO, okay, thank yes. you. Yes. Okay, John, you're next. I'm not sure that I'm a member of the committee, so I'm not going to vote. You're not. Yeah, John, you're not a member. All right, I vote yes. Okay. I believe that's all. I believe Gary. I, 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 yes, I'm also a member of the committee. Okay, thank you, Richard. Okay, so it looks like Terry, uh, you are now the vice chair. Um, of course, uh, uh, what you call it. So I'm going to turn over the meeting to you to continue with general public comment um, right. and then take the meeting from there. And then I'll stick around for a few calls and then I got to get out of here. I got about six minutes and then I need to go to sleep. All right. Hey, uh, Martin, can you promote me to co-host so I could uh, uh, take the other public comments? Absolutely. And uh, Michael, I want you to know uh, my thoughts are with you and um, all right. Good luck tomorrow, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Terry, you have been changed to co-host. All right, thank you. Uh, last uh, three digits, eight, four, five, public comment. Your mute's live. Hello, can, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Go right ahead. Hi. Uh... Hi, hi, I'm Jody. Um, I'm calling in to echo all the comments about um, the rocks or the boulders being placed um, under Katargis um, because one, it produces or it's unsafe for people who are unhoused and also for people with mobility issues. Um, and also echoing or reflecting on a previous comment about how um, we need to respect each other on these calls. Um, I would also like to mention that uh, by putting those boulders there, you are um, disrespecting your unhoused neighbors. 
uh, that's all. And I would like to see accountability for um, the boulders being put up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, uh, hang on. Uh, Hannah, um, you're on live. Hannah? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to echo what the other people are saying about how disrespectful it is in this community to place these giant boulders there, especially when money was raised through a GoFundMe. I don't even know the leaps that you would have to make to not use that to aid unhoused people in our community. And to the caller who was talking about placing the boulders, um, I'm very tired of the like helpless woman and child argument. Um, we are fighting, to, I'm a young person, I am a young woman, I'm fighting back hopefully to help unhoused people and I don't fear them. Like I feel like the older generation is acting towards them and it's somebody that could be you tomorrow and to kind of make this dichotomy between like us and them and like they are scary and bad and create trash and drugs like imagine living your life in the public eye like that completely um like without um like aid or in fear of police violence when they were talking about getting rid of the homeless people like when you call the police officer like where do you think they go what do you think they do um, I was wondering about the two cops who were also in this meeting before who did get caught laughing at the unhoused community. And I was wondering where they were to hear all of this. And I just wanted to also thank you, Jess, for um, letting people speak on this. I think it's really important. And sometimes it is uh, uncomfortable and difficult. And what we have to realize is, however, what importance we place on our lives, um, the same should be going to them. And it's not an easy thing. Thing that is going to be changed and yeah um thank you i agree thank you anna yeah thank you okay going uh to the next one we have uh 276 is your last three of your phone number 276 818 area code 276 Jerry. Yes. This is Jerry Kasparian. I can log in and uh, be listening and I can I can't vote. What's going on? All right. Um, well, now you're on now. So let me move to the next caller. Or actually, uh, Mark DeWitt. Mark DeWitt. I've yes. unmuted you. Yes, go ahead, sir. Hi, uh, Mark DeWitt. I live in Palms, uh, just a little bit west of there. And um, I just wanted to echo the comments of most of the previous uh, folks um, in this meeting uh, that, you know, this sort of wildcat action to displace homeless people from underpasses to me seems deeply inhumane and antisocial. Inhumane because, you know, to treat your own neighbors like that is, you know, just totally inappropriate and antisocial because you know, by displacing folks um, <clears throat> willy nilly like that, it's inevitably they're going to, you know, end up somewhere else, like perhaps over in my neighborhood on Sepulveda. Um, and I also wanted to note the irony that, you know, the public comment was suspended for a period of time so that the chairman could get a good night's sleep when he is authorizing, you know, many, many others to not receive the same thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Juliet Kim. Hello. Yes, Juliet Kim. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just wanted to be what? here and echo. H hello. It's just You're a, right, go right ahead. Okay. Um, so I wanted to make a couple of comments. Um, I do agree with many of the previous commenters that these rocks or these boulders in this underpass are pretty arbitrarily placed um it seems like a pretty direct aggressive form of hostile architecture um i also wanted to comment on a previous commenter of the community making again that woman and child fearful reference that these people are fearing for their lives in this community um which i just find a bit um almost pompous to reduce this homeless man or this houseless person to his belongings um to drugs, to five bottles of urine, um, to reduce this person to those things, to bolster his own argument. I just found that like a bit um, gross, to be honest. Um, 
I feel that the community, especially like someone who echoed before, um, resources should be available for these people. There are other ways to assist um, and to provide support for people in the community, because even if they're not living in your nice town homes, they are a part of your community. Um, they are human beings. And to deny them even the space of shade under an underpass um, is pretty, pretty inhumane. And I, again, also would like to echo the previous commenter who said the irony in that this leader wanted to leave so he could get a good night of sleep like the comfort and the privilege that comes with that and for him to just so willy-nilly treat groups of people this entire group of people as a nuisance to be brushed aside um so it just seems evident that that is like the goal of this um i would like to see some accountability see what this council will do to remove these um, cause again, it just seems like really outlandish. It seemed a very aggressive approach to an issue that has many other solutions. Um, and you clearly have the resources in West LA to address things. There is wealth. There was 3.7 K loaded into these rocks. Like I can't think about all the other things that that could have provided. Um, uh, yeah. And I appreciate the platform. I appreciate like this discussion and I, uh, end my time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Okay, moving down to Rihanna. Hi, can you hear me? I sure can. Hi, uh, my name's Rihanna from Streetwatch, and I'm calling to say fuck you to Peter Illiff, Stephanie Rips, Matthias Baker Mizuki, Maisem Furugi, and any other Sor Soro NC members who are involved in, in illegally installing these boulders to displace our most vulnerable neighbors, and that could potentially even include Terrence Gomez, who is chairing this meeting. Um, also a friendly reminder to neighborhood council members that you are legally not allowed to respond to or interrupt public comments or to unpolice them for swearing. Um, to Peter, who made our, those lovely psychopathic comments earlier, what gives you the audacity to think that someone would accept so-called housing from you um, when you're clearly the type of person who would spend $3,600 just to make sure someone doesn't sleep in an underpass in your neighborhood during one of the worst heat waves LA has seen in years. Um, how dare you call someone's belonging you trash when you have no idea what their situation is and mention their waste when there's no trash cans nearby and no restrooms in the area. Where are they supposed to go? And how dare you call others on this call hateful when, Peter, you openly admitted to a crime on this recorded Zoom calls. And I sincerely hope the LAPD officers who are on this call made note of that and that they will get this, the recording of this call from these neighborhood council members so that they can pursue this. Um, I demand that Soro NC censure and expel any members who were involved in the dumping of these rocks and fully investigate their actions and work with the city and Cal Caltrans to have the boulders removed as soon as possible. Um, also, just a heads up to other meeting attendees that your hands are automatically lowered over time. Join an organization, join Street Watch. I yield my time. Fuck you, Peter. Thank you. Next is uh, Michelle Grant. Michelle, where'd she go? Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hold on, I have some feedback. Sorry, give me one second. Okay. All right, while you're figuring that out, Michelle, I'm going to call Tommy. No. Hi, I should be, you should be able to hear me now. Okay. Hi, um, okay. So my name is Michelle Grant. I am a Rainier Village uh, resident. I live on Holt Avenue. I live around the corner from uh, the Garth underpass. Um, I've lived, I've owned this house since 2001. I have watched this neighborhood go through all sorts of shifts and changes. And I would say 90% have been um, absolutely wonderful. And one of the things that's been amazing has been how neighborly and terrific everybody has been as the neighborhood has changed and how um, even with other new people moving in, um, we've really been able to uh, retain our flavor and that it's been a very culturally diverse community. I am going to be taking a, a bit of a different stance in terms of the Cataragus underpass. And I realize that I'm going to probably hit a lot of ire from other people here, but frankly, um, I live around the corner from the Garth underpass. 
I've had multiple occasions where people who are uh, posted up under there have trespassed on my property, um, not the least of which was uh, two weeks ago when I had someone on my porch for an indeterminate amount of time. And uh, I and that same person was back the next day with casing my house again. That same person then went around the corner and terrorized a six-year-old by cursing and screaming obscenities at her and telling her that, and I apologize for the study, but telling her that he was going to fucking kill her. He then turned around and threw things at uh, an, another neighbor. He has been seen spitting on other neighbors. There is a very big problem here. Now, don't misunderstand me. I have spent a fair amount of time volunteering and working with people in the homeless community. And I, given it without the COVID situation, and frankly, if there hadn't been an outbreak of TB and typhus last year um, on Skid Row, I would still be volunteering down there, but I'm highly immunocompromised. And so I couldn't continue doing that given the, the imminent danger. Um, I am now in a position here where because of Corona, I cannot go out very much into the world because of my immunocompromised state. And now with uh, people trespassing on my property, um, uh, causing chaos, throwing things around, um, uh, uh, treating everything with disrespect on a, on a level that you have absolutely no idea and um, uh, stealing um, and then doing the same for uh, other people who are living in the direct vicinity. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that this needs to get to get dealt with. Um, I do know that Lhasa has been out. I do know that uh, the city has done some stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have a very, very serious problem. And that problem is not getting better. And um, I look at what has gone on over at uh, Cataragas. I did not contribute to the gun GoFundMe, but I did um, uh, actually, because I am under a doctor's um, uh, direction to try and walk as much as I can. Um, I walked over there uh, yesterday um, before it, in the early hours before it got too hot. And I saw them and again, I am disabled and I had no problem conversing between the um the walk uh, the 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 rocks and the uh on the sidewalk um it was certainly plenty open um and it was clean and i got to tell you something um that was something that i really uh appreciated and considering how much illegal dumping there is in the area and i get what people are saying about how hot it is and i get what people are saying about how this feels incredibly inhumane i completely understand and i there's a part of me that's with you but I also will tell you, I can't be afraid in my own house. I can't be afraid in my own home. And I can't, and my neighbors who live nearby feel exactly the same way. And for those of you who are on this call who don't live nearby, you need to keep that into consideration. And if you feel the way that you do, come out and try and help. Not talking about telling people that they can't be under the freeway or wherever, but if it was clean, if it was safe. There are children who are gonna be walking through these underpasses to get to Hamilton High School and Shenandoah Elementary School in the not so distant future when they open up for in-class uh, teaching again. And there's potential for disease, there's potential for violence, there's enormous amount of dumping, there's illegal commerce. It's a huge mess and it has got to be fixed. So whatever the neighborhood council can do to that end, I very much appreciate and frankly, the folks who are cursing or whatever, I don't see that as, as constructive. I really, I think at this point in time, we really have to find a way to come together as a community, try and help folks that are out on the street to help them get into situations that are safe and clean and sanitary um, and where they're able to get the mental health and drug um, uh, issue health um, uh, help that they may desperately need. Um, but I am to the woman who was talking about being of the younger generation and all of that and whether or not, you know, fighting from a different standpoint, I'm going to tell you flat out and I am a full on badass. Okay. On every level. I started one of the, the original gourmet food trucks in this town and I have stopped trucks with like semi tractor trailer trucks with my hand in the middle of the street if I had to. So it's not about that, but it is about saying I have to feel safe in my home. And I don't have to feel like I should have to put bars on my home because people decided that they were going to live under the freeway around the corner from my house. 
nor should the people in my neighborhood feel that same way. And at that point, I yield my time. Sorry, Tommy, um, where'd you go? Can you hear me? Yes, Tommy, go right ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, so I want to respond to Peter and a little bit to Michelle, um, who obviously has some, still some bigotry to work through in her analysis. But uh, I mean, obviously these, these boulders are, are cruel and inhumane, right? Um, but I would just like you, I mean, since the empathy neurons obviously aren't working in some of your brains, I would like you to consider how you would feel if somebody came and put boulders on your front porch, right? I mean, the idea that because someone is poor and undergoing some number of crises, right, whether it's mental health or drug addiction or poor, I mean, I mean, fuck, these people are fucking poor and you're and they make a mistake, right? They do something which you deem unacceptable. And so you remove them from their home because it's quote unquote your neighborhood and therefore you get to dictate who lives in your neighborhood do you realize how fucking arrogant you are like i think this neighborhood would be much better if we removed peter from the fucking neighborhood how about that he admitted to a crime how about the police do something about that crime right they'll remove people for bikes they'll remove people for stealing shit how about removing peter for putting these illegal uh rocks in the middle of the fucking sidewalk causing an issue of public safety because removing people from their homes and putting on the, uh, them on the street is a problem of public safety as well. Like that is something which this committee fails to understand is that public safety is not only when someone commits a crime, it is housing, it is healthcare. It is living on the street without a fucking bathroom. So when you have to pee, Peter, I would love to go to your fucking house and take the bathroom out of your house and then criminalize you for it and take you to jail? Like, where the fuck do you think you're gonna go to the bathroom, Peter? Get them a fucking bathroom. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Like, you're gonna spend 3,600 on putting boulders? They don't have bathrooms, my God. You people are sick and disgusting. And I have a few more points to make. Uh, the rent keeps going up and incomes are falling. Where the fuck do you think people are going to go? 71% uh, of unhoused people have lived in this city for more than 10 years. When the rent continues to go up, they go onto the street. Those are your fucking neighbors that used to live in houses. Your neighborhood includes unhoused people. So stop excluding them when you say my community, it includes your neighbors who have lived there for fucking ever. And also fuck your children because there are 17,000 unhoused children in LAUSD, get that through your head, 17,000 unhoused children. So when you use children as an excuse, you are excluding 17,000 children that live on the street. Like this is a crisis and this is how you people deal with it. Have you ever asked somebody on the street what they need? I guarantee you it won't be calling the cops to get rid of me. They will say a place to live, uh, I need health care. I need food. How about you all focus on getting them those things instead of focusing on yourself? Like the selfishness and in exclusivity against poor people is just incredible. Like, how do you people live with yourselves? Like, I think I can't wait for the day when I can bulldoze all your fucking homes and remove you because you committed a crime. Like, get that through your head. Like, removing people from their homes because they broke a rule is inhumane. Fuck all of you who are involved in this. Every single council member who was involved in any of this should be removed immediately. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Tamara or Tamara? Tamara? Hello? Yes, you're on. Hi. So. I just wanted to say that during a deadly pandemic that's happening, right, we're all aware of that, the CDC has stated that if individual housing options are not available, which are not available in the city of Hawthorne, people who are living unsheltered or in encampments to remain where they are. That means stay where they are. Where the hell else are they supposed to go? There is no shelters in the city of Hawthorne. There are no legal places for people to go who are unhoused. There's probably five cooling centers, probably at most. People are dying in the heat. And I also just want to state, I know when you've never been poor, 
or maybe you've always had it good, you think that poor people are all this way because they deserve it, because they didn't do anything and that their life means nothing. But people are poor because they lost their jobs or maybe they got sick and they couldn't pay for health care or maybe they got their house taken away from them or maybe, you know, so many things could happen. These people are homeless for a reason. It's not just drug dealers. There's so many kids in LAUSD that Tommy just mentioned. What does that mean? That means that they're going to school and they're fucking homeless. So when you're thinking of this homeless man who's peeing under the bridge and you hate homelessness, remember, people are homeless. The most people are homeless are unhoused youths. They're youths who ran away from home because they were in bad situations or they were domestic violence situation where their husbands are beating them up. I know you think that all homeless people are bad, but it should not be a crime to not have a home. These people don't want to be homeless. They don't want to be in your bridge. I'm so sorry, Michelle, I hear you. I really hear you out. I hear you out better than I heard Peter. That is scary to you, but do something about it. $3,000 could have been going to water, to getting a porta potty, to getting a sink, to finding affordable housing, to creating a fucking shelter in Hawthorne. But this council is gonna talk about how scared you are. And for the kids, these are human beings. Yes, there are sometimes some bad people out there, but there's bad people everywhere, not just homeless people. You can't criminalize these people who have nowhere else to go in the city of Hawthorne. There's nowhere else safe for them to go. What happened was a bunch of rich folks who don't give a fuck about anybody came together and were happy to buy rocks instead of trying to put their heads together and think, what can we do to fix the situation for everybody? You straight up thought rocks were better and you're going to just hear all of us and think that we're being ignorant and that we can't hear you out. We care about everybody's safety. We don't want you guys to be harassed, but we also don't want homeless people in the streets who are unhoused for so many reasons. You talk about mental health resources, we should figure it out. There's no fucking resources in Los Angeles. There's a reason people are homeless in Los Angeles. It's because there's no services created for people. So please remember, that homeless people aren't criminals. So many people who are homeless end up doing drugs because they're in the streets forever and they're hopeless because nobody looks at them because you walk over them and you put rocks in their fucking path. Look, to everyone who signed that GoFundMe and paid that money, I want to believe that you did this because you care about the community, but I know you fucking did it. You're selfish, you're entitled, and you don't actually care about the community. Just say it. Straight up, you don't care about human beings because that's who they are. Come on, what are we really talking about? There's people dying out of a pandemic. There's people dying out of this heat. This is not what we should be doing. This is fucking ridiculous. Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see, next is 044. Oh, four, four. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, um, I'm also commenting on the boulders. Um, besides being an absolute mobility disaster and accessibility disaster where people with wheelchairs, maybe even people with strollers cannot access the sidewalk, which, you know, is designed for people with wheelchairs, if, as soon as you put an obstacle on it, people with wheelchairs all of a sudden can't access it. Wonder why? Um, besides being an, an accessibility disaster, it is also straight up murder for people. The heat, the heat wave is killing unhoused our unhoused neighbors. The heat wave, the, the underpass, the the overpass provided shelter, however brief however little it was, provided a small amount of shelter, a small amount of shade for unhoused individuals, and you are deliberately taking it away because you want them dead. That is, that is the message I'm hearing from this neighborhood council. I am appalled at that behavior. Um, I don't expect police officers to care about unhoused individuals' lives or to not want to murder them because historically, it, 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 the police have been the ones to murder homeless people but beyond that the heat is going to get to them too so it's really not okay in any 
in any capacity to have done this. Um, and it's, it's just, uh, I, I don't even care what your excuses are. I don't, I don't care what your excuses are. Take the boulders out. I don't care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Uh, next one is Holly. I've unmuted you. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Holly Craig Worley. I am a resident of SORO. In fact, I'm a candidate for a board position next week. Um, and I am also calling to express my dismay at the boulders. Um, I'm very disappointed that those were placed there and am incredibly concerned um, that uh, anyone from the Soro Neighborhood Council was representing themselves in that capacity in helping them be placed there. Um, and I would like to ask the Soro Neighborhood Council to investigate that. I don't know if that can come out of this committee or needs to be started at a general board meeting. Um, but I'd like that to be investigated. And if it is found that somebody acted in an official Soro Neighborhood Council capacity in doing so, um, that that be condemned um, or receive a censure. And I also would like the Public Safety Committee to work with Council Member Wesson's office, which has already pledged to help remove the boulders um, and helping them do so. And, you know, I, I think there are a lot of concerns that have been raised on this call about the safety of our homeless neighbors um, and the safety of our housed neighbors. And I think that it seems like there's a lot of room for work to be done um, by the neighborhood council to uh, ensure that everyone in the neighborhood, whether they're housed or not, can feel safe living here. Thank you. Uh, next one, um, 321 is uh, your phone number. Three, two, one. Yes. Hi. Uh, yeah, I just want to, again, echo what dozens and dozens and dozens have been people of pe people on this call have been saying. Um, the fact that there is one person who has supported their support for or voiced their support for these boulders is crazy to me. Um, and that you guys really need to look at that. That we're all saying you need to take these away. Um, don't just listen to the one person who said that they wanted to keep them. Um, it's really disappointing and disgusting. Um, again, we're in a heat wave. Again, COVID is happening. People, you know, hundreds of people are becoming homeless every day in Los Angeles and you guys are killing them. Um, you 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 have to listen to us um when we're calling in this you you just have to um yeah this is crazy thank you all right next one up is is it ali monroe hi hi um, I'm just calling to echo pretty much what everyone else has said and um, about removing the boulders. And I think that it's pretty disgusting that um, the way people are grouping unhoused people into the category criminal based on one person's action or your experience with a few people as if like people who are able to afford houses aren't also many of us criminals. <laughs> so that's uh, horrible to me. And I just hope that you guys listen to the public and take these boulders away as soon as possible. I yield my time. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Emma, you've been unmuted, Emma. Emma?
You've been unmuted, Emma. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm calling because I agree with the previous callers about the boulders. I'm also curious about what your, Terrence Gomez, what your involvement with this was. Um, I'm curious about the involvement of other council members. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to say because I would love for there to be more transparency about this. Thank you, bye. All right, thank you, uh, Marge. Hi, thank you. Um, so I can't say that I've ever stopped a semi truck with my bare hands, but I did spend 12 years on the board as the chair of outreach. And I know how hard it is to get uh, attention for actions of the NC. So I find it really shocking that we've had thousands of retweets and Twitter conversation in which the name of this neighborhood council, which many people have served much time trying to do good work for has been you know, sullied by such a sort of thoughtless and uh, inhumane action. In fact, a number of years ago, we were awarded, um, um, you know, in parallel, in, awarded our community and our neighborhood council for a town hall on, on the homeless issue, which was nothing but compassionate and, and very well attended. And we literally won an award from the city for being a neighborhood council who sort of was leading by example on this issue. So to see that in such a few years and with, you know, I don't know which board members, the allegations are certainly that there was at least one, if not more board members who maybe used, um, if not an official action of the neighborhood council, used the name of their position to, to provide credibility to what was happening. And it's just really, you know, it, this is not, um, this doesn't represent the Soro NC that we've built and in a very short amount of time that I've been off the board now, I'm sort of really appalled. The last meeting I called into was also one which was, you know, equally heartless about, um, you know, supporting whatever. It was about the defund police issue. We've got to understand that this neighborhood is actually very mixed. And Michelle, I feel the pain of what you're talking about, but I think it's very sanctimonious to make assumptions that all these people who are calling are from somewhere else. I've lived in this neighborhood for 15 years and I've devoted over 12 of them to public service, as has my husband. So if you add up the hours in our household, it's been thousands of hours. So just don't make these assumptions. And to Peter, who spoke earlier, you know, I really bristle at this are for mothers and children, not simply because it diminishes women as it does and other callers have mentioned, but it's just not true. I mean, there's hundreds and thousands of mothers and children in this community who, who aren't showing up, you know, um, to, to place those boulders. It was a handful of people who did this over the hottest weekend that we've had, you know, in forever in this city. It's, it's really to, to use those excuses for actions that y'all decided to take on your own without the involvement of the city, without the involvement, the formal involvement of the council, without the support of those structures. You know, we've done a lot of work on Robertson. This has been the work of decades. And it's, it's a work that has been founded in, in the principles of outreach and the principles of we bring a community together, we have dialogue and conversation, and then we volunteer to make the place that we live better. It's not 15 people raising a bunch of money and going and putting a bunch of rocks out there. It's, it doesn't speak for the community and you know it's, it's really unacceptable. So I would also like to understand from the Soro NC perspective, uh, understanding that I understand a little bit about how things work inside the board. What is your process for investigating which board members, if any, were involved with this and how they um, position their, their status as a board member in these actions? And what is the, what will be the process to investigate and to reprimand uh, these folks? And will that be open to stakeholders? I also wanna point out that when Peter says this is a choke point to national, uh, you know, those of us who've been here doing this work for decades will know that actually many foot traffic studies have been done, which show that the vast majority of people use, then use national to connect from Robertson through to Venice. And in fact, in past efforts where we've asked for improvements under that freeway, we've been told, actually, it's not true that all these children are using it to get to Hamilton High School. So invoking these things, which are not evidence-based and fact-based to sort of um, as kind of um, baiting black emotional blackmail is just, you know, it's cheap. There's those of us around who know what those numbers look like. And, um, you know, I just don't think this is a way to wade into a community and, and take action. It's, 
you know, it's really, it's just, it, I'm, I'm honestly embarrassed and ashamed that this organization that I poured so much of my time and my love into, you know, um, even has a, a remote association. And so this conversation isn't the board agendizing, how do we get rid of these boulders? The council president Wesson had no knowledge of it. This was a shady action taken by a handful of people on their own reconnaissance as though they represented the community. I'd also like to suggest that when those boulders are moved, hopefully in the immediate future, we have some bulb outs uh, along Robertson, which would be a great place to put some of those boulders. We have parks in our neighborhood that would be a great recipient for those boulders. Let's take this money for quote unquote beautification as it was positioned in that GoFundMe. It certainly didn't say anywhere, we're gonna pay for a bunch of boulders to be put on the sidewalk there. He positioned it as community beautification. So let's take the good investment and let's actually use these boulders to beautify our community and not use them to push people in that sidewalk even closer into lanes of traffic, which are quite hectic there and that underpasses people are using it on and off the freeway. So anyway, I, it's now two and a bit hours into this meeting. You've heard nothing but people opposing this. And I really hope the board takes this seriously and, um, I gen genuinely hope that it's not brushed over if board members did inappropriately use their status to somehow legitimize this, that that actually is a very serious issue. And for uh, members of the community, buck up and join in community when you wanna make change. Don't just go rogue and decide upon yourselves that you're saving women and children because I'm a woman and I didn't ask for any of you to come and save me. Thank you. All right, next, uh, Zach. Zach? Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, hi, sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is Zach and obviously, uh, you know, I've seen about this on <laughs> Twitter today. And I gotta say, it's really, it's really depraved and just totally soulless to do this. You raised $3,600, that money could have gone towards as other callers have said, a number of things that could have helped these people, but instead you wanted to torture them. I mean, it's really sadistic. So, and, and also <laughs> very clearly illegal. You didn't clear it with the city. I mean, I don't know how your board can allow these people who did this, these, these, these soulless villains who did this, to remain on the board. I mean, they were just trying to torture unhoused people. And, and uh, you know, Michelle, who called in before and was so thrilled about this, you know, like to, to, to lump everybody together because of the actions of one person and cheer this on, this illegal action. You know, what if someone in her neighborhood didn't like her and they just decided I'm gonna get rid of her? I don't think she'd like it then. She wouldn't like she wouldn't like that vigilanteism. So, you know, again, as as other callers have said, this was a record breaking weekend of heat, 120 degrees in some parts of the city, and 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 these people from your board, rather than helping the people who 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 most need it, they're out there trying to destroy what meager accommodations they've found. You know, these people didn't choose to live on the street. Whatever happened, happened. And they're making the best of it. And there's so little shade in this city. You know, good for them for being able to find a little relief. But that little relief so triggered the members of your board that they had to go on this sadistic vigilante raid to get rid of them. Really just appalling, appalling behavior. And, and yes, the last call, caller was right. This is a, a blight on your neighborhood council. It makes you guys look evil and disgusting. Thank you, I yield my time. Okay, uh, Emily, um, where, where'd you go? Emily G. Hello? You're on. Hi, my name is Emily. I've been a resident of LA for 30 years. 
I don't know if Peter Illip is still on the call, but in response to his justification for his illegal actions that go against CDC guidance, how can you in good conscience say that people were not displaced when there was previously a place for shaded encampment and now there's no access during a deadly heat wave in a global pandemic? I agree with prior members of the community that judging the unhoused community based on your individual experiences and fear is a form of vigilante violence that you have no right to make and you are no more valid a member of the community than an unhoused person, regardless of how you regard the trash of a person you once encountered. It is inhumane, unethical, and you have no right to redesign the city to be inhospitable to people you deem disposable. To Michelle, I would like to know if you would feel comfortable being judged for the actions of a random housed person in your neighborhood. Mental illness and drug use and domestic violence happen in houses too, but you would never generalize all housed people by the actions of some. Unhoused people are not a monolith and displacing people further does not keep you safer and only contributes to public safety if you don't consider some people to be part of the public. Thank you. Okay, we have David. Good evening, my name is David. I am not a uh, resident of Soro specifically, though I've lived in the area further west down Venice and uh, further north up Robertson since 1988 or so, and I'm well familiar with the Robertson National Culver Nexus there, and it is very congested, especially around Hamilton High School. Um, and I have to say, I support the vast, nearly unanimous majority of callers here who have spoken out against the hostile architecture that these boulders represent. Uh, you know, listening to Peter and also to Michelle. Michelle, I see you're still on the call. I'm not sure if Peter still is. I certainly understand if you have specific concerns about specific threats. I mean, Michelle, somebody on your porch, that's obviously a matter for immediate law enforcement and should have been handled in that manner. But uh, the idea that a small number of people using the name of the neighborhood committee made a singular uh, decision that impacted, you know, public property, LA city property, uh, to modify the city landscape in this manner uh, because they had the private resources to do it uh, is, is, is truly unconscionable. You know, those with wealth can redesign the city to their needs. That is not what living in a community is about. Uh, and one of the only other call I can think of on this evening that has been not about the boulders was a very early on a woman called about a comment about illegal dumping that she was hoping to get some feedback on. And indeed, these boulders, if I understand correctly, represent exactly that. These boulders are illegal dumping. And the man who did it actually called in and said, hey, I'm the guy who did it. So uh, yes, where is law enforcement and what is the uh, committee's plan to remove these boulders and perhaps repurpose them? As a very recent caller just said, there is ample use for them somewhere. Uh, this was the wrong way to handle a threat the wrong way to handle a crisis. It was completely extraordinary as far as following policy, going back to very all on this call, or there was a debate about what's the policy for changing the order of business in this. There's a, I hope I've made three or four points by now. I think my, uh, my position is clear. Thank you very much. I okay, next one is Andrew. Hello, can you hear me? We sure can, sir. Okay, yeah, uh, my name is Andrew and uh, I live um, in Rainier Village. Uh, I live um, not too far from the tunnel. Um, so this is my opinion. Like, I'm just wondering like how many of the callers actually have property in near uh, Rainier Village or near the Cataragas Tunnel? Because yeah, I, 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 unless if you experience it, unless if you go to the metro station via there, you probably don't know what's going on. Or like you probably don't have never seen like how it looks like with the boulder right now. So just a little bit background, like um, I, 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 I was poor before and now that, uh, yeah, I can, yeah, I, I have house here and I, I raised my family here. It doesn't mean that I'm entitled but I'm grateful. In the same way, I also help with uh, uh, um, at homeless shelter 
and helping like uh, in, in, in the skid row for the past like five years. So I know their life and their struggle. There are some of them, a lot of them are good people. And a lot of them also has mental health problem. So my problem here is like, there were the, there was like one time that um, when uh, I was on vacation and by the time that I came home, the, the, uh, there was like homeless people staying in my backyard. So that's one of the issue that I had before. And of course, not homeless people are like that. I also had my house broken into before too. So there was crime related to this. I'm not saying like this is because of the Catar uh, Gastanol, the homeless that lives there. But I'm just saying like, we do have a, a problem here, um, the crime problem here. And, you know, um, with the tunnel that I'm seeing here, um, it's actually like the boulder. Yeah, I don't know like about the legal issue about, uh, about this, but I, I think like the boulders actually help. I, I mean, it helps like to make it like looks, it doesn't look like that, but it, I mean like it doesn't have like mobility or accessibility disaster like what you guys claim about. And if you think about it, like if you have like two home, I mean like homeless, like occupying like both sides of the streets, how can people like even pass by? You don't even have one feet of clearance. Like, you know, and if you go to the office and you using like the, the, the metro, uh, using the metro over there, it's just not, not good. Like, you know, if you're, especially if you're a woman or a, a children, children, I'm not trying to use them. It's definitely like, yeah. I've seen like, you know, with my own eyes, like how the way like people also like being harassed. I'm not, again, I'm not saying like all homeless are like that, but I'm saying if you, if we are passionate about them, we help them by not placing them on the street. We help them like to, yeah, we, there's a lot of avenue to help them out, but we should not utilize this or politizing, or politi or politicizing this for this reason. That's, that's never right. And that's very, very inhuman to me. Um, so yeah, I raised my, yeah, that's my point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, let me go to the next one is Nicole. You should be unmuted, Nicole. Hi, Nicole? can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, so I just want to make a practical suggestion for the council to have a, a public comment timer. Um, so the boulders are going to be removed. They were placed there illegally. There were no permits. And now we've got our teeth in this bone and we're not going to stop until they're gone. I'm glad that Peter identified himself so that we know whom to launch the ethics violation investigation into. It's very convenient. And I appreciate it. Um, I recommend that the council add the vigilante boulder committee issue to the agenda for the next meeting. Um, every... NIMBY on this call who uh, who is complaining about the crisis of the unhoused residents in the city, I hope that you support defunding the police because all the things that you say you want to help the com com unhoused community takes resources and it takes money. And the only place that's going to come from is the bloated LAPD budget. So please know that as, continue, as COVID continues to ravage the community, the unhoused population is only gonna grow and no amount of drug counseling or mental health services is going to help because this is a resource issue. Like people said, these are families being put out on the street. It's not just these cases, these one cases, two cases where people are complaining about a specific person. This is gonna be an ongoing growing issue and we need to address it at the root and not use Band-Aid solutions. Like as long as I don't see them, it's not a problem. We're just gonna put these boulders up. So for the community, get involved. The need is great. and we need to put this energy toward positive change, not further disenfranchisement. There are plenty of organizations to volunteer and to donate to. Services, not sweeps, and not illegal vigilantes. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, next one is Sarah. Hi, um, my name is Sarah. I just wanna say that I echo and agree with almost everything that's been said besides a few comments and like the caller right before me called them um, NIMBYs. And if you're not aware of that term that describes you, it's called a not in my backyard approach. And that's exactly what you took. And I just wanna say that because you feel that you called yourself, this one specifically for Michelle Grant, um, because you called yourself 
someone who cares and someone who has volunteered. I just want to urge you to stop um, acting like you care because you very clearly stated that it, you care until it enters your own space and makes you uncomfortable. And you don't get to jeopardize people's safety and people's resources um, if it enters into your space. And now you have to realize it and you have to view it because you have the privilege to walk away from it. And as someone who wakes up every morning and goes to work in my job in Skid Row, I know how much, like people are suffering there and you volunteering there one time does not hide the fact that your volunteerism was um, uh, rooted in white supremacy. And I just really don't appreciate any of the comments you made and I couldn't let that go um, un unaddressed. So thank you to all the other callers who addressed it as well. Um, thank you to everyone who had more eloquent, eloquent words than me. Um, I yield my time, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, next one is Karen Nord. I apologize for if I, where'd you go? Um, um, I guess I got off the call. Uh, uh, Jag. I've unmuted you, Jag. Yep. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Go uh, all right. My name is Jose Alberto Garcia, or JAG. I'm in the Wilshire Center uh, Neighborhood Council, and I also am in the Homelessness Committee, and I volunteer with various organizations that deal with homelessness, with outreach, and then other services on basically getting resolutions to these problems that are lacking or the path to this basically from problem to solution doesn't exist or exists with a lot of friction. Um, well, quite clearly, I, I'll say for the boulders, I don't support them and they will be removed because they are illegally placed. But what I want to bring to my point is that that money that was spent on these boulders, it feels very inhumane. Uh, I myself am spending the majority of time pausing my business so I can support organizations and especially support giving free groceries to the community members and also driving around to provide outreach and uh, materials, supplies, hygiene waters, basically all of the capacity to maintain a life, whether you're housed or unhoused. Um, the one thing that I've experienced during my whole time is I've only encountered one problematic person who was aggressive towards me, but I do not generalize the whole community in that manner because it's not true. I've also had interactions with housed folks and just people of the general public who are, whether an elected official, a police officer, or people. At the end of the day, they're all humans. People should be judged on their character, not really on their circumstance or issues. And the problem that Michelle brought up about a house person having mental capacity issues, um, that's because there's no resources to deal with that. While the majority of the unhoused folks that I've dealt with, um, they're very friendly. They will greet you. They will remember you. They'll always ask you, things, they'll give you things, because that's kind of how when you treat people as a community, people understand that we're all being humane. We're all in an understanding position where we have to make sure that we take care of each other. Um, but putting boulders under that underpass is very, very wrong, especially when it comes more in, even though it was not a direct result of the neighborhood council, it does feel and represent in that way. While I don't live in this area, I do eat, I do consultation work in this area. So that means that a lot of people who don't primarily get that firsthand experience, they do get that firsthand experience in their own community because here in Korea too, Koreatown too, we have that same issue where people do sleep in front. And instead of me just harassing them or basically trying to get them off my lawn, I provide them water or see how I could help them. Because when you essentially treat other people humanly and humanely respectfully manner, they'll be in that format too. If you treat somebody aggressive or you try to criminalize them, they will behave in that manner. So at the end of the day, even if you had a bad experience, you should not use that as the main factor to just basically anything that you don't don't like to just exclude because that's what what end up happening to a homeless shelter that was going to be built here in Koreatown a whole bunch of NIMBYs a whole bunch of people who were using the whole excuse of the schools and the children and all of that they basically just ended up moving that shelter 
blocks away and it ended up costing like like 150 percent more if i recall 200 percent at this time i feel like that would be so at the end of the day like we can't really stop ourselves from adding the solutions we just got to understand that people are trying to live by day by day and we need to support each other as a community not as somebody who's this is my block and this is what i'm gonna do because i have a house and you don't or you don't live here um regardless we just need to make sure that we are able to take care of each other at the end of the day i yield my time thank you thank you next one is megan your life megan hi can you hear me sure can Hi. Okay. So um, I used to be a resident of Soro. I now live in East Hollywood, um, but I just wanted to, I'll try and keep this short. I love your guys' commitment to, to democracy and not limiting anybody's time. Um, that's been really fun, but I, I just want to uh, hit on some points that were brought up earlier. I want to echo most of the people that have called in in saying that it is uh inhumane and honestly pretty gross to see hostile architecture being um, placed illegally. I know Michelle mentioned illegal dumping and that's, and again, uh, I believe an earlier caller mentioned this as well. That's exactly what this is. It's illegal dumping. Um, and on top of being illegal dumping, it's a giant fuck you to your unhoused neighbors. Um, again, we're in the middle of a pandemic your housed neighbors may very well soon become your unhoused neighbors. Um, you may become an unhoused person soon, honestly. Like, we don't know where our lives are gonna take us and to judge people for their housing security or lack thereof is disgusting um, and dehumanizing. And I also wanted to um, just, I, you know, I know a lot of people have slammed Michelle. I also just really, the only reason that I raised my hand to speak was because she mentioned that uh, she felt that it was unfair that she had to put bars on her windows because people chose to live under the freeway around the corner from her. And I just wanna say, really reevaluate how you view your neighbors because nobody chooses that. Nobody. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm getting a little worked up now, so I can't really say anything else um, without going on for too long. But I, I think you should also all really think about the fact that your former neighborhood council chair called in to chastise you um, about your participation as a council in an illegal and dehumanizing action like this. Anyways, um, I'll sign off now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one is James. Hello, can you hear me? Sure can, sir. Okay, yeah, I, again, a lot of people have spoken really eloquently on this. I'm gonna keep it pretty short. I just wanna say to Michelle, Final Solutions Grant, if you're afraid, maybe turn on the lights. Um, also, no matter how necessary you thought that was, it will literally never be. That is what people are talking about right now. This is what the passion of what people are talking about right now, because the people who participated in this, you know, you want to have a dialogue about this, Peter? You are being publicly shamed for what you've done because of how disgusting it is. I saw those, that image of those boulders on the sidewalk. It made me want to fucking puke. Uh, this is a form of dialogue, okay? And it is in respect of what you have done. I also wanna say that the council's association with this is incredibly concerning and there needs to be accountability. There needs to be, I demand the censure and ex, uh, we expel the participants in this. This isn't gonna go away. Um, and if you are interested in solving these problems, you need to think intelligently about solutions. You need to contextualize, be able to contextualize an individual's act. 
that is what I see lacking in all these justifications for what's happened. There's a, literally, it's stupid. You sound like an idiot talking about these things without any context. Uh, that's all I got to say. Fuck all you guys. <laughs> Get rid of Next is no, uh, no me. Where'd they go? Um, I don't see them anymore. Uh, Kendall. Sorry, I had trouble unmuting myself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Kendall Mayhew. Um, I uh, am a stakeholder in SORO. I am incredibly disheartened to see uh, what has been done uh, in association with your neighborhood council. Um, what I'd like to bring up that I haven't heard anybody talk about yet, and I want to say thank you to everyone who's called into this meeting. I'm very grateful to hear people standing up for all the people who live in Los Angeles. Um, as a person who's um, directly impacted, my mother has been in and out of homelessness as I've been an adult. It's an incredibly difficult situation to do any level. And what you need when you're in that situation is you need the support of your community. And I have been horrified to see the way that people talk about people who have gone through very intense situations that are beyond their control. Uh, and um, so on a personal level, I'm disgusted and horrified that these people want to call themselves part of my community when they actually very visibly do not care about every member of the community. Um, it comes down to a very simple thing. Do you think that some people are disposable or not? What kind, of way, what kind of leadership do you wanna have for your community? Do you wanna be the kind of leaders who care about every single person? Or do you wanna be the kind of leaders who make decisions about who gets to be valued and who doesn't? It's up to you. And this decision indicated one way of going. It's a way that a lot of people in this country seem to be going, not the way a lot of people in Los Angeles are going, which is the response that you're getting here which is an overwhelming outcry of support from people who live in this city who are letting you know that that is not the direction this city wants to go culturally. We want to take care of everyone. That's what the people of Los Angeles want, regardless of the circumstances of their life, regardless of some minor decision that they made or not, regardless of how they were born or who they are or any of their demographic details, including being unhoused. That's what's being indicated tonight quite obviously. So I really hope that you take that seriously going forward. And I would like to reiterate what another caller said, which is that we are in the middle of an unprecedented pandemic on top of a housing crisis, okay? We had 30,000 evictions going through the courts every year in this city before the pandemic. And right now we have a ton of people. We're literally talking about tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people who are unable to pay their rent and are being kept in doors in the homes right now simply because of an eviction moratorium that is a ticking time bomb okay so if you're afraid of unhoused people and you are a neighborhood council that has not put forth any kind of statement demanding that your city council members cancel rent and mortgages during this global pandemic and economic meltdown then you are not seeing the forest for the trees this is a comprehensive issue and the reason that you're getting people who are very emotional like me or who may be using curse words that are so offensive to your delicate sensibilities um, is because people have been working on this and have been trying to get people's attention about this for literally decades, for years, we've been talking about what is coming with this housing crisis. And so it is incredibly frustrating to see people take these actions that are not only inhumane and immoral, but also incredibly short-sighted. Uh, they don't do anything to solve this problem stealing people's belongings and removing them from your specific area is not going to solve the homeless crisis we are in. And if you talk to anyone who has worked on it, they will tell you that. 
And there are plenty of examples of policy decisions that could be made that would actually end this crisis, would actually house everyone. And unless you have been in support of those for a long time, you may not understand the kind of emotion that people who have been working on it for a long time have right now in seeing something like this. But I also want to just remind people about who gets to be on a neighborhood council. It is a very important thing that people are being of service and serving on the neighborhood council. And I have a great respect for people who do it because it does take a lot of time and it can be really frustrating, like sitting through a really long meeting like this, or like sitting on a, on a neighborhood council where one member or a couple of members decide to do something absolutely fucking horrifying as one woman called in and talked about the way that this, this action has disparaged the work of this council that has been good for a long time. Uh, that being said, you also have to think about who gets to be on a neighborhood council, who has the time to be on a neighborhood council, who is the neighborhood council bring to. There are a ton of people that you represent who do not have access to be on this neighborhood council because they are working several jobs, because they have kids, because they are trying desperately to not become homeless, right? Also, there's a lot of unhoused people who can't be on your neighborhood council because they don't have the resources to run for neighborhood council. They may not have a reliable internet connection, for example. Um, and it is really important that you know that when you are elected to the neighborhood council, you are supposed to represent all of the residents. You're supposed to represent all of them, not just the ones who you might hear from. We're seeing stories all over about how kids who are supposed to be on Zoom for public school don't have the internet at home. There's a lot of people that aren't gonna be able to call into your meetings, okay? There's a lot of people who can't get the time off to come to your meetings. And what you're experiencing now is that something horrifying has happened and so people are making the time to speak up for those who may not be able to come. So you really need to consider that moving forward and consider what could have possibly led to a culture where your board members thought this was acceptable like all of that needs to be unpacked this isn't going away and and i really hope that you consider that thank you uh next one um was becky becky we lose becky okay then the next one ash did you already speak before ash Ash once. Okay, moving on to the next person. Uh, Jessica. I, I, there you go. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go right ahead, Jessica. Thanks. I'm a current SORO board member and a former uh, public safety committee member. And some of you may remember I resigned after this committee voted twice this year to endanger public safety, first by voting in the midst of a pandemic to demand that businesses reopen without restrictions that protect the public, and second after hearing from our community who described being beaten and unlawfully detained by police, this committee voted to send a letter praising our police, and I think that letter is apparently again up for discussion tonight. So to respond to Michelle and Andrew, I live in Rainier Village, and I am a crime victim, but not because of this tunnel. I've safely walked under this tunnel for years, twice a day, five times a week, often at night. I even walked under this tunnel when I was disabled and still learning to put one foot before another after a car hit me, so I can relate to the comments folks made tonight about the danger those rocks pose to disabled folks in walkers and wheelchairs. And Sandy, by the way, if you're still on this, I think the Transportation Committee might be much better able to address your safety concerns. I shared them about traffic safety. So now the times I felt uncomfortable have nothing to do with this tunnel, but when two things happened due to this Public Safety Committee. First, someone who attended this Public Safety Committee complained to Peter and others about me recently joining the Soro Board. And then someone gave Peter my personal phone number and Peter contacted me and other women using our personal contact information to complain about what we're doing to make our community better. And I note that Peter today refused to reveal who gave him my or other women's contact information. So if you're one of those people who enabled Peter, feel free to speak up on this call, own it, tell me who you are. And if this committee won't prioritize condemning the doxing of women who disagree with this committee's actions, then I ask you, do you care about the safety of all women or just those who agree with you? 
Because if women are anything more than a convenient trope you invoke to justify what you to want to do anyways, prove it. I also just want to echo the overwhelming demand from the public tonight that this committee prioritize exposing the Soro NC members who allegedly chose to spend thousands of dollars to prevent our unhoused neighbors from seeking shade in a deadly heat wave and pandemic. And if any of those individuals who funded or put these rocks in the tunnel are on this call tonight, you should reveal yourselves. If you think what you did is defensible, own it. There's still time for public comment. So if you're a Soro NC member, you could in this public comment, own it, or if you can truthfully do so, deny it. You have a chance now. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, John? Well, since I'm a current Soro NC board member and following Jessica, it's kind of a rough routine to follow. I'll own the fact that I don't know who did that, but uh, I am interested in finding out. Uh, I would just say I, along with many other board members, sat silently through this. I hope listened respectfully, took paid attention to your comments, but I would like you all to realize that like you, I awoke, I awoke this morning and found this dumped in my lamp. I had no, no prior knowledge of it. And I suspect all of our current board members had pro, no prior knowledge of it. I can tell you quite honestly that none of us as board members had any say in voting on this at all. I can also tell you quite honestly that there was no neighborhood council or city funding on this, but that's not the issue. The issue is what happened and what we do with it. And I'm fully willing to be judged on what we do with it. I do ask that you give us time to do something with it. I can't just turn on a dime and say, I agree with you and let's just pay no attention to what happened. Just like those who apparently did this paid no attention to what was going on with the city streets. Uh, so that's all I really basically wanted to say though I will say to some of those of you who were a little intemperate about Michael Lynn trying to get to bed at night, you don't know what the facts are. The facts are Mr. Lynn is in another state in the midst of preparing to donate a kidney to a family member and the operation is tomorrow. I don't think he'd be very pleased with me relating that, but I do think you ought to know that sometimes a rush to judgment is not a good thing. Thank you, John. Okay, um, Sam, you have the floor, Sam. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Sam, go ahead. Okay, thanks for time. trying to be quick as much as possible. So here is the things. To tell you the truth, I don't know where you are right now, but I just walked through the underpass. I understand that there were some comments about the safety and it could be dangerous if you don't pay attention. Yeah, there are boulder or rocks, obviously. There are not the tiny things over there and we have to be careful. As a father and as somebody that having two kids and in exactly in this crazy timing, COVID pandemic, whatever you call it, that would be the only hobby for us. Just go outside the house for 30 minutes, walk, enjoy it and come back. Rainier Village Park, I love it. I love the neighborhood. So I have to tell you, this is not the problem that Peter created or anybody else created. I think that's a bigger issue. We have to all rethink and just ask ourselves, what kind of situation lead people to do a job like that? I'm sure that if you wanna spend a dollar, especially you live in Los Angeles, you think about it, right? So how come 
a person or a group of person can come up with that money, which is again, it's not, I'm not talking about the dollar. It, I'm talking about the good funding. And how come all those people committed to do this voluntary and then get this job done as fast as nobody even understand? So they should be in some kind of problem or situation that forced them to do it. This is my idea. And the first thing that comes to my mind is because the city or the city leaders, they are not doing their job. It's not my issue, it's not your issue, it's not anybody in this call issue. And I understand that, you know, everyone, I had a cousin, unfortunately, he became homeless like a couple of years ago. I was roommate with him. It's tough. These people need help. But I cannot tell you how many days, how many time I was walking this underpass and I was seeing that homeless guy was sleeping on his pee, on his poop. Nobody was caring about this guy. I call LAPD, I call councilman, somebody helps this guy. He needs help. Who are those? Th these people, I, at least I heard 60 people, they are talking and they're all talking about the caring. This homeless guy was here at least for four months. I was giving him food. I was giving my kids to give him food. He, he couldn't even understand what's good to eat. This is sad. I was seeing that. Again, I don't know what was the reason the group of the people that boulders over there. But I think I have a pretty good idea. Because this is the sad things to see every day. Especially as I'm talking somebody that was living with the homeless, that is my cousin, for the years. That... It's it just hard to see this situation every day, every day. Ask for the help. I call LAPD. They are saying that, you know, hands are tied. I call the council. They are saying that, sorry, you know, that's what they choose. This is what they are telling me. Again, four months. It's not about two hours. A person in this heat. Yes, I'm telling to those people that they are saying, yes, this is warm weather. This person needed help. Who stopped by and helped this guy? He was here every second. He was screaming at night, morning, doing the drug in front of the public. He was making the fire. I called the fire department. They, they even knew that this is a homeless guy. They said, ah, oh, you already called a couple times. Can you believe that? He was making a fire. So nobody would even care if this guy would burn himself. So tell me, those people that they're all talking about homeless, tell me, where is the LAPD? Who, who I can call? I'm seeing this. I'm walking with my kids. They're asking me, Daddy, who is helping this person? You know what I'm saying? Big question mark. Go figure it out for the next 30 years. And this is it. That's all, all I wanted to say. We care about these people. But... I, I cannot, I cannot help them by myself. When the city doesn't care, then they ignore me. And I have to tell you right now, the fact that I don't see somebody and I have, I don't have to make explanation for my kids, this is amazing. But again, I, I wish that I could help if I had that ability. I hope that the city, the city leaders come up and help us with this issue. That's all. Thank you. Terry, we're at closing time. I would move the meeting by another half hour. I would say an hour, John. We still have a bunch of public comment. You got to unmute yourself, John. All I'm saying is we either have to move to extend the meeting or we have to cancel it. One hour, extend. Okay. Okay. Next one up is Jaime Penn. Did I say that correctly? Hi, uh, my name is Jamie. Jamie, um, sorry. Oh, no worries. Uh, hi, my name is Jamie Penn. Um, I'm actually the resident representative for the Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council, Subdistrict 3. Uh, I'm also a proud member of DSA, and I volunteer with Koreatown for All, doing uh, houseless outreach for our houseless neighbors. 
Hi to him calling about the boulders. Um, first off, where are you people? I don't see one of this committee. Um, are you representatives? Because I don't think you're representatives because representatives don't hide. Um, if you are representatives, you've done a terrible job representing your constituents so far. Um, these people are your neighbors. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the folks calling, also the gentleman that slept under the bridge. This is, this is your neighbor. You don't chase neighbors away, you help neighbors. And I'm absolutely enraged that anyone would find any reason to chase a neighbor away. These are people that need your help. That the approach that has been taken here is beyond inhumane. You have stacked rocks in somebody's home. I, I, I understand that it's a pathway. I understand that people cross there, but someone was living there. They were attempting to survive and you made it harder. I just want you to take a second and think about that. This person was only trying to survive. This neighbor of yours, so what kind of citizen are you? Are you someone that only benefits from society or do you contribute? Because this is a crisis and these are our neighbors and you're not going to solve this problem chasing your neighbors away. I have nothing else to say. I hope. Justin. 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 One last time, Justin. All right, with that said, uh, Claire. Hi, um, I just wanted to say first, I'm like always so impressed by the grassroots activists in Los Angeles who are working so hard during the um, heat he wave rather than uh, boulders in the way of people who are trying to survive on the street. They handed out thousands of bottles of water in 115 degree weather, 110 degree weather. And frankly, I didn't want to do that. It's incredibly uncomfortable that no one's paying them. They're doing it because they see a need that needs to be filled. Now, American exceptionalism is ruining this country. Everyone here thinks they deserve more than the next guy and they're gonna kick them in the face to get what they want. I'm appalled that a Hollywood director would use his, his, his achievements and his accolades to round up money to make unhoused people's lives worse. You realize this is genocide. To live unhoused is in a pandemic is it is a potential death sentence. To push people away, to steal their things is genocide, okay? You don't have ovens built, but it is, it, it is giving license to violent acts against vulnerable people. And that's what you're doing is you are you're encouraging people to take extreme measures. Also on the GoFundMe site, he says, we can't count on the cops, right? We can't count on them. We are gonna clean the streets. This is not a beautification project. This is not cleaning. This is violence against vulnerable people, which again is genocide. You have a government that is not acting on behalf of anyone. What you need to do if you were to really try to solve a problem and be humane is find out where the $1 billion that all of us have paid into with our tax money for the past 10 years, why it's not going to serve unhoused people. Why did Garcetti only have five cooling stations open during the pandemic? These are our questions. As this most beautiful person who talked about what his family has endured, watching a cousin be unhoused, listening to his children's hearts break, what we need is a community that comes together and works 
properly by going through the right channels. Your elected officials from the governor to the mayor to your city council people have completely let you down. And why? You know why. It's called nimbyism, not in my backyard. No one wants unhoused people anywhere near them. All you think about is the equity in your houses. You can't think about for one minute. Most people can't afford homes anymore in Los Angeles. You just hark back to a time when you could go work for patios united or whatever selling furniture outdoor furniture and make a living and live in a house no one can do that in this state anymore it doesn't mean they deserve to die it just doesn't mean it doesn't mean that they are are non-people um and your hands are dirty i mean you don't want to i i would like to think that you don't want to physically harm other people and end their lives but but that kind of action ends people's lives. It's not supportive. And as many, many people have pointed out here, this is not gonna solve your problem. You're gonna have to get out your guns and do terrible things to people. And we have elected officials already advocating for violence against people. Please do not participate. Please, I urge you, go to the mayor, ask him what he's doing and demand that he do something. You own property. Property owners are listened to. Other people are not. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, next one, let's see, we got two left. One is R-E-A-R-I-A-D-N and I E. Hello, yes, it's Ariadne. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So, my name is Ariadne. I'm a member of DSA Los Angeles. I have listened to a lot of comments tonight, and I want to thank everyone who called in to voice their outrage and despair at this obscene, obscene action of, of pound for pound dumping probably thousands of pounds more trash on the street in an effort to drive your neighbors from an underpass in the middle of a freaking heat wave. It's obscene to spend $3,000, $3,500 on rocks. A pack of 24 water bottles is like $4 at Ralph's. That money could have bought 20,000 bottles of water. And that time could have been spent handing it out to people, helping your neighbors. But instead, you, this ter terrible act of violence, but cowardly violence. As the last caller said, like, where does this end? It ends with killing people outright. It is fascistic conduct and thinking that leads people to take this kind of directly harmful action towards people that they don't see as people who they think are lesser than them, but they don't matter. Just because you own a home doesn't mean your property rights suddenly extend to every public roadway and public piece of land in your vicinity. You should be ashamed of yourselves. But I think the people who do this, who did this, don't feel any shame. But those of you who do, and those of you who don't want to be associated with this action, the ne now is the time. Now is the time to talk. You know, the next forty-eight hours are probably going to have a big, you know, who you name names on and talk about, and what you find out, and how quickly you share it with the public is going to probably set your reputation as a person for a long time. So think about that. It's absolutely, I mean, I wish I could say I were astonished, but I'm not. It's disgusting. All the activists out here, you know, if you just saw this on Twitter and you hung around this long, like join an organization, join K-Town for All, join Street Watch, join DSA. That's it. I'm done. Okay, next caller, last, last one is... 075 is there 
uh, phone number. Can you hear me? Hi, my name is Jean. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. First of all, I don't think I've ever sat through a meeting before and listened to so many people who did nothing but attack others. Not one of those people came up with a constructive idea to help work on the problem. How many of those people have dedicated as many hours as some of these neighborhood council leaders have in trying to feel fix this situation and fight with the city to try to get it done right? Any of you that are unhappy with the homeless should be calling the mayor's office and holding him accountable, not your neighbors who are trying to protect their livelihoods and their lives. The homeless can go into housing. There are beds available in the bridge housing. There are hotel rooms. There are apartments. And for those that are whining about the heat, there are open cooling centers and even the recreation centers are open to house the homeless, including, uh, I believe it's Chevy at Hills. So attacking community members doesn't solve this. For those of you that are uneducated in the law, there is a federal lawsuit that the city of Los Angeles just lost. It is against the law for any homeless to be living within 500 feet of the freeway due to this new federal law. And the deadline for their removal was September 1st. So what you're saying is you would much rather have them die from all the emissions that they're breathing in than actually get help and to go into housing. You would rather enable them to a quicker death. And that disgusts me. Obviously, those that are the complaining have not seen the boulders, or you would know that the sidewalk is now ADA compliant, which it wasn't with the homeless. So there you are saying that the rights of the homeless are more important than the rights of the disabled. Many of the speakers referred to areas outside of South Robertson, such as the lady who kept referring to all the problems with Hawthorne. That just proves that this is, this is part of a bigger call out to a group of people who just called to, to attack this neighborhood council and the community residents. Similar to the behavior we're seeing across the country, you only have to turn on the news. I'm proud of the, pres the residents for standing up for their, to their city and to fight for what they believe in, just like BLM. The only crimes committed are forcing people to live in unsafe areas and forcing neighbors to live in disgusting, filthy living conditions when they go out every day and work their butts off to try to save and hold on to what they have. And you expect them to live in a dangerous, ish, in a dangerous situation. You want the police cuts instead of being able to protect the residents as their first job in order of as a police officer is to do. The homeless don't care that they destroy others' lives or property. Before you, before you attack others, why don't you think about that? Not one of you against the boulders has offered to house the homeless in your homes in your, with your children. All of you instead have attacked people for trying to protect their lives. And that, to me, is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Thank you for the opportunity to let me speak. All right, I would like to thank everyone who gave public comment. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have a big problem with that woman. That cannot be the last comment that is said here. That was one of the worst things I have ever heard. You must be so far public removed from the over. you must be so far removed from the sufferings of your community to say that type of despicable shit to people trying to survive. Who Here here. The cooling centers can hold max 155 people across And that's the not city. housing. That is absolutely not housing. Exactly. That's absolutely not a solution to this. So let's get these people housed. 
Let these I people house. You people are trying to get these people housed. There is absolutely no housing resources in Los Angeles. As a current case manager in downtown Los Angeles, I can promise you there are hundreds of people that I have put on lists for referrals for housing that have had no movement in their opportunities to get housed. And so why do we hear that the city needs to build public housing, 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 housing and use the money no from the LAPD budget to do it? The solution is obvious. Defund the LAPD by 95%. Use the money to build, right. build Everybody public housing. Everybody has already it's spoken. Obvious. I would like you to also thank gave, them. criticized us. We, you have no idea how much time we've spent helping the homeless, helping the unhoused. Hey, I'd like to thank everybody. Very oh, oh, yeah. There's something pretty interesting. Mute everybody. I'm trying to. I don't have... No, don't Not everyone that's spoken. How many of the how much of that housing and apartment building being put up in Rainier Village or affordable housing going to the unhoused? Yeah, you guys, you you don't you don't want to take the law into your own hands. You need to go to your county officials, your county supervisors, your mayor, and you need to. But you're not powerless. Clearly, you, you can put thousands of dollars of rocks. You're not. I'd like to thank everybody. We had public comment. We need to now move on to our actual agenda. Going to item uh, four, uh, Neighborhood Watch Subcommittee. Uh, Bela, did you have any? Uh, did you have any? Bela, hi. Yes, I muted you. Yes. Um, well, for let me just see for Neighborhood Watch. Uh, we we still don't have any um, news on that. Is the business watch is coming up after this? Is that the next thing? Well, it's all within there because LAPD is not here. Okay. Um, City attorney, do you know anything about that? Because that's right off of, it's just north of Pico. Maybe someone should report an illegal dumping to Neighborhood Watch. Okay. Um, Will Neighborhood as- Watch take that up? It's the topic. We could be discussing, it's on the agenda, will the committee report illegal dumping of these boulders? Is that damning silence? No, that's not silence. I'm looking at the agenda right now. Because the agenda is actually Neighborhood Watch Subcommittee, Crime Alert, LAPD Briefing, City Attorney Briefing at 8755, and PRC BizWatch briefing. You've heard an alert of a crime from several people. Also, we've seen it on Twitter. Will the committee take this up as a concern of a reported crime of illegal dumping? We can't do that because that's a Brown Act violation. We can then refer it to LAPD, which we will do. I can also recommend that anyone who wants to, that there's a 311 app you can go on the app and report illegal dumping. Can I move on with the agenda? Yes, please. I, I respectfully understand that this issue with the rocks is a big deal, but we'd like to move on with the rest of our meeting. There's nothing that we're going to accomplish by continuing to discuss it at this meeting. I would Let's just get through the meeting and then we can do some action on it. Yep. Okay, so as far as the business watch, well, 8755, um, the only thing I can tell you about that building is that it's still in litigation. And the um, there, I've been trying to get some movement on um, a, le- a leasee of that building who could use the building for, for uh, we discussed with the owner, um, finding either like Cedars or another big organization that, oh, did I, I didn't mean to turn my video off. Sorry about that. Uh, here I am. Um, about turning that property into um, a facility that could deal with uh, people who have mental illness, since that seems to be the least um, uh, served community. There's no housing for people with mental illness. Um, so that we, if anyone has any ideas on or any contacts with a community like Cedars or UCLA or a big organization that would be able to take on a long-term lease to turn that property into um, a facility that would serve community members that are not served such as mentally ill or, or drug abuse, co- comorbidity, not just a drug housing. We have lots of drug housing. Um, as, uh, 
as far as the, the business watch, we've been working very hard at collecting the data. Let me just update people on this meeting who might not know what we're doing. Um, we've decided to move forward uh, with the impetus of somebody from the community to form a business watch along the Pico corridor and up Robertson, um, the Pico Robertson corridor to connect the business owners and the schools and whoever else is on that street with each other um, and put together a plan for, for them to be resilient in, in the event of a disaster or any other, um, just even just crime watch on the street. I have other members of the committee on this call if they have any comments. Lori, did you wanna make any comments? Lori Levine? Um, no, not really. Okay. I'm, I'm just listening. Okay, is Mark on the call? Okay, anyway, so just, um, that's just an update. Um, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Bela. Uh, the next one, the LAFD cert briefing. Uh, there's nothing going on right now because of COVID. There's no trainings going on and there's no cert training. So we'll know once uh, COVID, whenever we get to the end is when they'll start getting new classes. Um, we don't have any of uh, the activity relevant to the South Robertson area. A homeless safety subcommittee meet, uh, briefing, we had a meeting and as you can see with one of the new agenda items, actually to uh, the Venice Hotel was burned, had fire damage back in February. And we are looking to write a letter to the CAO, the uh, Herb Wesson's office and also the mayor's office to look at as a possible bridge housing uh, location. There's currently 28 uh, rooms there or uh, hotel motel rooms. We're, we were looking at doing 27 of them for bridge housing and then turn one of the units into a uh, showers, bathrooms and laundry facility. So uh, people on the street would be able to use it as a facility daily. So that's what we were looking at. It is an agenda item. And then um, I'm not even going to, uh, for uh, E, discussion, possible action. I know nothing about it. Um, Mike's not here. And then um, going to item F, uh, NPG. Wait, one second. One second, yeah. Terry. Sorry. Um, you said that I could discuss the bridge housing um, on Casio. Oh, yes. And, I'm sorry. I forgot um, about that also. You're absolutely right. Okay. The Grand, so, the grand Motel. Right. So um, I had uh, attended the, um, I believe it was a land use committee. I'm so, anyway, it was one of the meeting committee meetings um, and the bridge housing was brought up. Um, and I got some information. Oh, sorry. I keep turning my video off because my family, sorry, here I am. Um, uh, about this grand motel, it is now a bridge housing. It's been filled to capacity. I asked them, uh, Elizabeth didn't know how they chose who got to go in there. Our understanding was that it was supposed to be for homeless from Soro, but that is who, um, who, or actually from District 5, because uh, that it was Council District 5 that um, got that bridge housing. Um, so the only thing I can tell you is that we have a person that we can contact who's in charge. The bridge housing is run by PATH, and her name is uh, Tiffany Shirley, um, and it's Tiffany S at epath.org. And um, hopefully at the next uh, committee meeting, um, I can share that information. I did email everybody on that committee, but nobody answered me. So hopefully um, we can discuss it at the next meeting. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bela. Now moving on to, hang on. Oh, crap. Let me get to the right agenda. Okay. Um, discussion of possible action to identify organizations. This is for the NPGs. Um, did anybody have any recommendations that's been on the agenda for the last three, three months? Any committee members? Uh, hi, I know that Michael Lynn, this is Bayla speaking. Yes. Oh, let me undo my video again. Um, Michael said that he reached out to them 
um, and he didn't hear back. He reached out a couple of times. Um, I was going to, I asked Michael for that information um, so I could reach out to them again, but I don't think he had it with him in whatever state he's in now. Toledo, um, Ohio. So, Toledo, Ohio. So I, I, I know Michael has reached out a couple of times um, to one particular organization. Um, I don't know about other ones, but um, we had one really good suggestion, but we have not uh, been able to reach out. Okay, well then we'll carry that over until next month. If we could get the information, if you could follow up on that, Bela, that'd be great. I'm just yes. uh, going, okay, great. Now, uh, new uh, five new business discussion and possible action to write letters regarding uh, 8686 Venice Boulevard as housing for the homeless. Uh, one of the reasons why we're having to write this letter is because we originally requested through the council office to go to the CAO's office to request that that building be considered. We were told that for funding to be available for a new bridge housing, it had to be where the agency who, who or nonprofit that was going to occupy the building must be able to do it within 90 days. But we've seen from the Grand Motel that that took over a year until it was finally up and ready to go. So we're gonna request this to be able to see if we could get more housing in our area at 8686 Venice Boulevard. Uh, so we will uh, put a letter together requesting from the CAO's office and also council member Wesson's office and uh, Mayor Garcetti's office to take a look at it because the community is in support of, and the neighborhood council would be in support of this. So do I have a second? Uh, I'll second that. Thank you, Bela. Any public comment on this item? Uh, Matt? Matt? I've asked to unmute you, sir. Hi there, this is Matt. Yeah, I was skipped over when I had raised my hand prior. So I would just like to voice my concerns and stand in solidarity with the numbers of people who expressed their dismay at the rocks that were placed under Cataractus overpass. Um, and again, just because I'm not sure why I was skipped, but I wanted to just take the platform just for a minute and talk about the us them terminology that was used to refer to our unhoused neighbors and how highly unproductive it was. And I know most people on that call feel that way. So I won't belabor that point, but I just want to think about the villainization of the us them terminology uh, us you know being housed neighbors and them being unhoused and i want to highlight that we are literally putting rocks in their way um, on their path to anything better than their current situation and so i just want to call to mind like after this call we'll probably all plan to go to bed after a long day which i know has been a long meeting and everyone feels exhausted and i want to validate the hard work that everyone has done on this call but this is our problem to solve as neighbors. And again, with no distinction between housed and unhoused neighbors. And we clearly have money to throw at the problem. Uh, again, to highlight the, the dollar amount, 35, 3,600 that was used to buy the rocks. I wanna call attention to the housing that's going up all around the neighborhood um, and just inquire about whether or not there's affordable housing that's being considered as an option in this neighborhood to solve the problem again, because it's our problem to solve, not their problem to figure out or for us to continue to displace them. And I also, uh, a point was made towards the end there, unfortunately, that, um, you know, we should route our concerns in another direction. I want to, right here on this call, volunteer my time uh, to help move the rocks uh, or do anything with my time and my effort and my strength as an able-bodied person to help fix this problem. And I hope that we leave this call with some actionable step to do so. But that is what I want to put on the table. And I'm sure many other people feel similarly that we will volunteer our time and effort. And these aren't empty words from our side, but they actually, we carry a lot of weight as members of this community who care about this community, who care about the future of this community. And again, without making a distinction between those of us who are fortunate enough to have housing and those who unfortunately are not able to have housing. Thank you for listening. I yield my time. All right. Thank you, Matt. Uh, but this motion on the table is to actually have 28, actually 27 units of Bridge housing at Venice and Cataragus. Do you have any comment on that? Anybody? 
I'm in favor of it. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Uh, I only have the, it's Bela. Yes, um, Bela. My only comment about the bridge housing, which I'm very happy about, um, but I think we need to follow through with the bridge housing that, yes, for Venice, but for the one on La Cienega, because I'm not sure how, we need to know how PATH is determining who gets into the bridge housing. I mean, are they bringing people in from outside? I think the people who are homeless that are already within Soro are need to be the ones that get that bridge housing offered to them first. Well, actually, Bela, to let you know that I've worked with other bridge housings and the way they do it is they're non-discriminatory. So they can't take people from the local area first and that it's wide open to everybody who's listed in the uh, entry system. And that's how they get selected. Okay, so that's so why we want to get more units on uh, going. That's why we've been looking at this at, at the subcommittee meeting to be able to have 27 additional units plus uh, one unit, because there's 28 there, to have it as daily bathroom, showers, and a laundry room. And that's what we're looking at, and that's what the support we're looking for. Okay, well, can I just add one thing is that we, if we know that there's something that um, people who need this bridge housing um, need to uh, register for, it, that we need to help them have that information, have access to the ability to register for it. We can actually bring Lhasa in to do that. Um, we've had them out before. We can do that again. And that's one thing we've been doing over the last three months. Awesome. Okay. So with that, I want to take a vote of the board members or the committee members. Hi. Right. Yeah, it's Martin here. I'm not a, a, community, a committee member. I know you're not. <laughs> can I do a real quick public comment on this and a question? Oh, absolutely. We've been looking for public comment. Um, is this <laughs> right? Excuse me? Go ahead, Martin. Yeah, is this on the? Uh, is this within our boundaries? Is it um, Cataractes and uh, Venice on what side? And it's within the Soro boundaries, right? Yeah, the Soro boundaries run all the way to the alley that's just north of Washington Boulevard, where the city of Culver City is. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying. So it's very much within our boundaries. Thank you. You had public comment, or was it just the question, Martin? Sorry. Have a comment with a question, sir. <laughs> okay, all. I just wanted to make sure I didn't cut you off for public comment. So, all right. With that said, if there's no other uh, questions, I have one quick. I have one quick question. Yes. So I hear a lot that there is a lot of bridged housing that's not being used. So, if that's accurate, and, and I don't know if it is. But if that's accurate, why do we keep building more bridged housing that's going to go unused? That would be a question we'll have to ask Kevin Taylor, who's the representative for uh, the mayor's office for our area. But right now, whether it's bridge housing or permanent housing, we need to get that housing going one way or the other. That's why I brought this forth, this motion through the committee, subcommittee to bring okay. to the committee. John, you had a question? Yeah, I have a question. I have a question and the basic question is, do we have any idea on a per unit basis what the bridge housing cost is? About 700 K per, per unit with land acquisition and building costs. We could buy an awful lot of water bottles for less than the price of one unit. Well, I understand that, but we want to get people off the street. And that's the reason why I brought forth this motion to, for, for at 8686 Venice Boulevard for the CAO to do a analysis of the property to be able to put it in as either bridge or permanent housing. So we had the second, correct? Who is that? I'm sorry, Bela, is that you? Where'd you go, Bela? Bela? No, it was not me. I didn't do anything. Who, who, who did the second? Or did we even get a, can I have a second, please? Oh, I, yes, yes, I did second. Oh, okay, I thought I wasn't going crazy. Okay, with that, second. With the committee members, uh, yes or no? Yay. Okay, that's one. Yeah, Bela? Yes. Okay. Um, is Richard still on the call? I'm looking. Richard? 
Mr. Bloom? I see his call is on. I see him. Uh, I do too. Mr. Bloom? Okay. Well, with that, because he's not responding. Uh, did Gary leave? I yes, I believe he did. Yes. Okay. So three yeses, zero noes. Anybody abstaining? Well, nobody else. Okay. Going to the next item. And uh, discussion of possible action to write letters regarding the EIR noncompliance and other issues at 1956 Sheridan. This one was brought up because of the uh, water drilling the, Be the city of Beverly Hills is doing in that area next to residential homes. And many of the neighbors are concerned because they weren't part of the EIR process. And they want their voices to be heard and they want us to write letters to the uh, city of Beverly Hills and to the mayor's office and to uh, council, uh, I mean, he's no longer president, uh, council member Herb Wesson. 